Hello? Probably would help if we didn't have the mic. Yeah, in. whoops. We were capturing game footage earlier, and uh, yeah, we didn't want it to be cop. We didn't want it to be hearing us at random while we we're doing it. So, <laughs> uh, it, today's Ned's birthday, Rags, and what's going on, bro? We're gonna be drawing one of Ned's original characters. Hey, Rick, how's it going? We will pass that on to Ned as soon as she gets here. It's uh, Nedlitz uh, is her name. She should be here sometime soon. Although I think she was saying earlier that she broke her phone. So hopefully she's still able to join us. Man, that's the worst. Things are good, Rick. Things are good. Um, just been doing stuff for the channel. Well, trying to. We've been having a lot of bad luck in most of our uh, footage capturing for Monster Hunter. We cannot get these friggin' rare endemic lives to show up for us. It is, it's, it's, it's just so hard. How have things been with you, Rick? Now it looks like you've got like a, like a ghost TV screen or something down there. <laughs> a sparkly TV screen. Yeah, what is this creature? That's good to hear, Rick. Have you been in, uh, enjoying my Iceborne? If I could get my words to work. How have you lost your layers already? <laughs> you just started. Sparkly? Sparkly cake. There you go. I think. Ned, what's going on? Happy Hello. birthday! Happy birthday! We got your cake up in the corner there. Yeah, it got shrunk. Yeah, Sasha just shrunk it down so we could start to draw in fate. What even brush is this? You've got so many brushes, I can't keep up with any of the stuff on this tablet. Oh. There we go. Alright. Let's see, reference. Sasha has one reference. Yes. So did anything fun happen with you today, Ned? Do they still do that at school? Where they, like someone can put some money, like a dollar bill on their shirt on their birthday and then people can give dollar bills or whatever. What? They used to do that when I went to public school. What? It's like a classic tradition. Yeah, I never had that at my school. Just take a safety pin and you safety pin like a dollar bill to your shirt. And every, and to let every, yeah, that means it's your birthday, and then everyone can choose to give you something. What, so, if, what if it's not your birthday? I, I imagine that wouldn't be very good for your school reputation. Hmm. Otherwise, every day would be my birthday. <laughs> The great thing is, is we can have Nintendo music without copyright claims now. Oh really? They don't care about that anymore? We haven't got hit with a copyright claim in months. Hmm. And I'm pretty sure we've had Nintendo music at least to some degree almost every single stream. You just, it's hard to avoid it. Yeah. You got an 800 pack of paper. <laughs> that's a lot of paper to draw on. If you like traditional medium, then that's definitely a cool present. Yeah, you can never have too much paper, too many sketchbooks. 
That's why I like when I have artist friends. They're they're real easy to shop for generally. Yeah, you can't really go wrong with like supplies and stuff. Here are your three reams of paper, and I got you this cool pen. I don't even know if it's any good, but it looked kind of cool to me. Actually, I think if I got anything for an artist friend nowadays, it'd probably be like, uh... Probably Copic Marker, something like that. Mm. Those are cool, right? Those are the end thing. Yeah, they're expensive, though. Yeah, but you can use them on all sorts of stuff. You can use them on, like, hair, wigs. You can use them on metal, wood. Like, you can use Copic markers on just about everything. I have a love a set of Copic markers. I think that'd be fun. They look pretty cool. Hey, Green Pop, how's it going? Oh, hello. So is the face more like a snake? Kind of. I was just looking at some pictures of snakes to see. Because I noticed that lip has that kind of upward uh, jut to it, like that cleft. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if that's kind of snake-like. Yeah, it sort of looked that way to me. Is snake? Oh, you're baking cookies? That sounds awesome. What flavor cookies? We got chocolate chip. <laughs> oh, what flavor? That's, that's like... That works. I mean, I guess it's more like what kind of cookies. Mm. You said it funny. Yeah, it kind of did. What flavor cookies? I like oatmeal raisin. Choco chip. Well, it looks like you and Cream Pop got something in common, because that's what you're making. Chocolate chip. Octoid. Octoid does have them octopus legs. Is that a thing that exists? Well, I mean, the let's see, the, the word oid means like or similar to a mm -hmm. variant of, so you've yeah, got it seems oct. like there's not a particular kind of octoid. So there's like, it's the octopus people or octopus like. Oh, it's the Loco Roco theme. <laughs> I haven't heard this in forever. They sound like, um, what's his name? Uh, uh the guy with the shop. What, the penguin, or the panda? No. Oh, a meal. Yeah, a meal. Yeah, it does kind of sound like a meal in his truck. Man, as soon as, as soon as I ask you, I remember what his name is. So, are you having any cake or anything special today, Ned? Or is everything going to be on the weekend? I remember you said you were doing a little something tonight. Just hanging out or whatever. Oh, and your pickles. Muffins. Muffins are good. They're, I mean, they're pretty much like a little cake. Mm. Just without all the icing. And honestly, that's better for me. I'm not a fan of cake icing. It's too sweet. It depends sort of on the cake, but yeah, usually. 
Like if there if there's icing, it has to be very very small amounts. Like one little quick butter knife swipe over is like fine. Mm. Kind of like if you were to have bread and butter, or like like how thin you'd spread peanut butter on a sandwich, probably. Mm. Yeah, that's the good stuff. Or just sweet bread for sandwiches. Yeah, just pumpkin. sweet bread, like a brioche or something. Like yeah. Pumpkin bread. Well, pumpkin bread is good, too. Welcome to the art stream where we talk about food. Are you about to hit Mastery Rank 69 already, Rick? Nice. Damn. Like they say on Reddit, nice. Nice. We, I think, are like Mastery Rank 50-ish, somewhere in there, because we've been wasting days and days on these rare endemic lives we just got two more videos to do we have a ton of the moles but we haven't run into the rock mole at all yet and we we cannot get the friggin jellyfish in the sky to pop like he just Can won't show up seen that? we have all the footage we need except for the actual appearances of the rare mole and the the what is it the moon night moon no winter moon nettle that's what it's called he is eluding us to the extreme what was that mm -hmm. you didn't see it but I like bit into my pickle mm -hmm. and something popped and it like it flung the juice way over there I hope it didn't hit anything it, like threw it toward Milo Milo, you okay? He's left. He good? Okay. No one died. Yeah, I'm not big on cupcake icing. Any kind of icing is, is just way too rich. I don't like... Like, I can take rich, like, sweets, but they have to be in more of a solid texture. I don't know. Icing is too... Uh, it's... Super sweet drinks and super sweet icings. I can't really do them, but I love sweet stuff. I'm afraid to bite into this pickle now because it's going to explode. It already exploded though. I've made a mess. There's pickle juice everywhere. I think even a little hit the monitor. It's nasty. <laughs> I'm going to have to clean it. Oh, apparently, you guys remember how I almost died eating pickles last week? We looked at the bottle after the fact, the jar, and it turns out I grabbed spicy pickles without even thinking about it. Because, you know, I shop with my stomach, not with my eyes. <laughs> but we can't let them go to waste. We will fight the spice, and we will, we will beat this jar of pickles. There's like 20 pickles in there, though. I'm gonna do like one a stream. <clears throat> Eat this jar of pickles over the course of like half a year. Would they still be good, though? Oh no, come back. They're pickled. I think they last like forever. Ned says she loves Fate's expression. Oh, I'm fat. It is kind of a devious sort of expression. Is that what you were going for with fate, Ned? Yeah, it didn't look that way to me, so that's what I was going for. It's if you're if if it's named fate, I would have to say it probably would be a little bit like mischievous, especially because it like it knows what's gonna happen, so it's like <laughs> this is waiting around for you to find out what comes next. Mm. It's like all of this, all of your life is just reruns to me. I'm just waiting for you to get done watching the episode you're on. Ned says she's a like a demon thing, so she's a mischief. <laughs> I could definitely work with that kind of personality. So it looks like her head 
these are actually horns or almost like bat ears. You can see like, or maybe, um, would yeah, these like horns with the extra horns? Yeah, would they be like kind of like spiked, almost like a demon's tail on top? Because they look like bat ears with cat with like horn caps on the top of them. Sorry, cream pop. Hope you got some pickles around. I need to get some sweet gherkins, but Sash doesn't generally really like the sweet gherkins. Mm -hmm. I'll try one of those spicy pickles though, and hope it doesn't explode on me. You ain't trying this over your tablet. What? No, 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 I no. To try what? Not today. Trust me, these things are like dangerous. These are these are landmines. I'm I'm taking, I'm taking the, this one for the team. I have paper towels. What are you gonna do? Lay it over your whole tablet? Yeah. You can't draw with paper towels across your tablet. I'll just eat quickly. You will keep it to your side. Put paper and you'll chomp them at your side. Do not eat them over your tablet. <laughs> okay. No, no, don't put it there. You eat them over here. Okay. But then your hands are gonna be pickly. You're not gonna be able to draw with the pickly hands. Oh wait, no, we can wrap it up to paper towel. Like at the fair. I'll give you a little one. You see this guy? He's cute, huh? That's precious. So you probably won't explode too. He, he's precious. Here you go. Precious pickle. Precious pickle. Precious pickle. Precious pickle. <laughs> we'll, we'll dab it a little bit. Dry it off a little bit. Less juice, more loose. Good pickles. The way Sasha drawn fate, fate definitely looks kind of like one of those, one of those villains, and uh, reminds me of the villains in what was that, Rango? Mm -hmm. I think it was Rango. You Rango? know the the chameleon out in the wild west. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure it was Rango. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Woo! The spicy pickle juice trying to get me. <laughs> It almost went down the wrong tube again. How does it do that? Usually I have so much control over things that I eat or drink. Not with this stuff. With this stuff it's like, yeah, you're supposed to go down that tube, that pipe, that one, that sir, that one, sir, that sir, 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 that pipe, no, not that one. <laughs> and it's like, nah, it's gonna go over here. It's mm, just have a The spicy pickles are gonna kill me. That or change my voice. They're gonna they're gonna re-sculpt my vocal cords. Next week I'm gonna be sounding like this, you know what I mean? Hey guys, welcome to Giddy Bit Games. We like spicy pickles <laughs> and smoking voices. I reckon. Okay, back to the yes. Man, you need to get a lot smaller. I'll see. I was, gonna, I was just thinking, fate is like huge. You're not going to be able to fit all the fate on there. Yeah, I just like to draw a big old face. So there's tons of expression. I'm going to shrink it. That's why These digital are, art is the coolest. These are some super crunchy pickles. Like, I have to like try to Ouch. eat them quietly. Whatever this is. Can you hear that? Yep, I uh, sure can. Little big planet. Oh, Holy crap, it, it, it is Little Big Planet. I haven't heard Little Big Planet music in forever. I remember this one. I loved it. Oh no, how'd my brush get changed? What's this? Little Big Planet was a good series. Mm hmm. <clears throat> Little Big Planet started that whole uh, 
era of gaming for like five years where every game had to have an extreme amount of customization. And most games still have a lot of customization, but not quite game-making customization, where you can go in and actually make the whole game yourself. Yeah, some games still do that. We got them deltoids. I mean, if you got bleed wings, I'm, I'm heavy, probably. Yeah, if they're blades, then yeah, if they're gonna cut anything, they're gonna be pretty heavy, so you'd have a bit of musculature. Nice. We have a pickle party. Everybody gets pickles. I like the dill pickles, but every here and there I do want to have like some sweet pickles. Sweet peas. If something can see the future and it knows everything and you can't get away from it, like fate, it makes sense that fate would be able to get everywhere. You want to go to the sky? Well, fate has wings. You want to go out of the sea? Well, fate's half octopus. Hmm. Oh, you got the last pickle? The last pickle is the most tasty because it's been in the jar the longest. It's been able to eat up the life essence of all of its brother and sister pickles. The laser doesn't have like limb tracking. I was gonna say, what are you doing? Just looking at my arm real quick. Oh, okay. I thought you were petting a cat. I was, and then I oh. looked over there. <laughs> so, no cat. Sasha's just no. over here in my peripheral vision, just Losing. flailing her arm around, and I'm like, huh? Yeah, I'm just looking at it. There's nothing over there. Oh, so you just needed a reference. Yeah. Well, if you need me to flail my arms around, I guess let me know. Okie dokie. Milo's getting that good nap today. Yeah, man. Yeah, most of the pickles we get are like those, they're like half the size of those really big jars of dill pickles you can get at the fair, like the, the, the state fair pickles. Although this one had a precious little tiny pickle that is the one Sash got. It, it kind of looks like uh, Fate is holding the cake now. <laughs> Here, let me shrink down the cat down. There we go. We can oh. see the detail. Yeah, I can move this over just a little bit. So, Ned, you guys, you said you guys are going to have a party or go somewhere on the weekend? What are you guys going to be up to? Anything fun? Well, I'm sure it's fun, but... Still got a little bit of summer left. At least here in Texas we do, so. Have an end of season pool party. Hey audience, what's going on? How you doing? Okay. And yes, today is Ned's birthday and we are drawing one of Ned's original characters. Casually chose. Huh? Casually chose something to do. Casually chokes. That's that's how we do it. No big deal. Just, just I'm just dying. It's fine. <coughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm way okay. I did this on purpose. There have been times where I've I've carried on, like, c 
complete conversations with Sash while I was choking on stuff like pickles or Taco Bell or something like that. Taco Bell's the worst because if you let that go down the wrong pipe, you're gonna have problems for like the next four hours to four days. And that's a creepy arm if I ever saw one. Let's try another one. Spiky. So, Ned, I'm curious, is the influence for this character, um, usually your stuff is a little more, um, not quite so much in, like, the creature department, or, like, the, like, this character could almost be perceived as quite scary, so, some scary stuff, huh? is it because Halloween's coming up? Yeah, you're right, she does, too, actually. I was just curious what influenced Fate's design. Hmm. I like to ask these things because I can't draw. Oh, that's right. You did mention that. Um, Gardener's Village, I think you said was the name of it. So you're going over there? That sounds like a really cool place. You did tell me about this, like the week before last, I think. It might have been last week. My perception of time is quite bad. If there's anything I'm like not interpreting right, feel free to tell me. Oh yeah, if you want Sauce to change anything or whatever, just let us know. Milo, like, hasn't budged an inch. He's dreaming, though. His paws are twitching. There is no video game music soundtrack without Donkey Kong. <laughs> no. So for the blades, are you going to like go back and retro spots in the arms for the blades to fit into, or? Um, let's see. Because for arms like that, the way I would have done it, I mean I'm no artist, but the way I would have done it is, I would have probably drawn the blade, like not the whole blade, but just kind of like the spots where they enter or come out of the flesh the whole way down as you went. Hmm. But. Yeah, I still haven't figured that out yet. I'll get there. I actually used to do these kind of pictures all the time. Fate is my kind of monster. I don't really have a lot of experience drawing monsters, but I, well, I mean, monster hunter monsters, but like, animals, I guess? I used to draw monsters like, that. they used to be the, I was your typical kid, I, I used to draw all the monsters, all the cars. But I drew lots of you monsters. Drew cars? Yeah. I cannot draw cars. Oh my god. How do you draw like how do you get the lines? The smooth curves and the like hard angles, what? You ever notice how I can actually draw pretty pretty decently freehand a long straight line or a curve or whatever? It's because I used to draw cars. I used to draw the DeLorean, I used to draw like futuristic cars like flyer cars uh i'm a pretty i'm pretty sure that i originally designed the uh the first hybrid car and then someone stole my design <laughs> did you post it online no online didn't exist you know remember the the first prius how it was like it had the back wheel was covered halfway and the bottom of the oh, wheel was exposed yeah. and it was completely geometric and I, I, I used to draw that kind of design all the time. So when I first saw the first Prius, I was like, wow, that's kind of creepy. It's eerie. I'm not serious about them stealing my design, though. Everyone, I'm, it was a pretty simple design. I'm sure just about anybody could have come up with that. 
It just it just is proof that I was basic. Oh, I was wondering. So you actually you you didn't get the legs to come out right, so you did tentacles. But that's a creative way of that's a creative way of fixing a problem you're running into. Yeah, I usually just give up. <laughs> I used to not be able to draw. Like there were two types of feet and legs that I could draw. I could either draw the Mega Man feet, you know, where it's got like these really huge, circular, like big oval style boots that had pointy toes. Or I could draw like gargoyle or demon dragon kind of feet with claws and everything. Normal people feet, I was horrible at. So most, if I was drawing a normal person, most of the time I would draw them either standing behind something so I could hide their feet by something in the foreground, <laughs> or I would have them standing in water because I got really good at drawing like water around ankles, basically. Hey, nothing wrong with that cream pop. I actually was born with lazy eye. Um, because my dad was a Marine in the military and he wanted me to be to, to get into the service, he put me through, when I was really young, he put me through a series of around 18 different operations to have it corrected. So they would basically, you know, go into the back behind my eye and work on tightening and massaging the muscles to get them tight. But I would still have... Um, I still had a lot of issues, so, yeah, uh, I just kind of, I still have a bit of a lazy eye, it still drifts off, I can actually control it now, though, I can kind of shoot it off to the side, it stops working after so far, though, I gotta bring it back, and when I get tired, when I get really tired, it drifts off pretty badly. If somebody just, like, met you, I don't think anyone would know. Eh, I don't know, because it's in my left eye. My left eye actually sits... I can't open it as wide as my right eye, so my left eye sits... You may notice it in my avatar sometimes. My left eye actually uh, does not open as much. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, like... Mm. My left eye, like, it generally rests um, at close to half of what my right eye sits open at. The operations didn't completely correct it, though, and when I was a kid, they told me that if my eye strayed too far off, it, that it could actually strain the, the optical nerves and I could go blind. So after they told me that, I went and I started practicing with it. I would stare at mirrors and stare at toasters, like the sides of metal toasters, and focus on it, and I just kind of like focused on training my eyes to focus on one spot and straighten it out because I didn't want it to go blind and eventually I got to where it was pretty straight most of the time and I can control it now but if I get tired yeah I lose it <laughs> syrup is moldy that happens I think you're supposed to refrigerate it so if it is left at room temperature maybe I mean it is like plant material I'm sorry how dare you touch me? <laughs> oh, we're having a—it's a little birthday stream, and we've got—we've got, we've got the, <laughs> the lady that states the cake is a lie. I'm trying to figure out how to give these blades like different shapes to make them. Look. Hey, what's up, Dave? It is Wednesday. Oh, hello. And today is Ned's birthday, so we are doing a stream and drawing one of her original characters. I actually really like this character's design. It's really given me this kind of a... Uh, Almost like a near meets Silent Hill sort of vibe. Oh no, that's Silent Hill. Ooh, backpacks are nice. I remember when we were going to Japan, um, 
we were going to be there for three weeks and we needed to plot we needed to get, find a bag that could accommodate us because we didn't want to have a bunch of baggage as we uh we were doing a lot of hiking and walking and running and everything um so we we hunted for a while mm-hmm. trying to find something that would like fit in the carry-on parameters yeah because we wanted it to stay within the carry-on because we've had a lot of bad experiences where our non-carry-on items got lost or destroyed so it would be really bad to end up in a foreign country without any of your stuff yeah uh its name is fate and it's got a lot of uh very very chimeric it, it's very much a, a chimera actually that dress has a the front of it's like open and bloody right the skirt part I don't know. how can you forget the bloody skirt huh? you can't I'm not too good with blood. I can do the blood just leave it to me Those feathers are huge, but they're supposed to be blades. Yes. Aussie blades? Two rows of blades would be nasty. Can you imagine a hug from this? Yeah, I just want to be friends, except I don't. I'm getting out of here. Bye bye. A monster born ice hunter. <laughs> you are the son of a monster. And your t your kind eats ice. You have to go out and chip away at the glaciers that are all around you. There's actually food everywhere. There's not much to do. You just go out and grab the food and you come back. Or maybe your ice hunters maybe your ice eating monsters that live in texas and there's no ice anywhere so you have to go out and rob ice cream parlors and stuff like that dark disney's frozen yeah we've been trying to actually play monster hunter for fun it's not been happening we we're we're, we're like we have so much footage of uh for the the rare endemic life videos the last two the mole one and the uh the flying jellyfish the winter moon nettle we cannot get the winter moon nettle to spawn for us as soon as he spawns the video will be done and we're trying to find the rock the last rock mole the one with the helmet and that sucker just will not come out yeah we've just spent days going back and forth on expeditions yeah two of us doing this Uh, we are, we're down, we're up, we've actually beaten the credits, uh, we still have to unlock, we, as soon as we got to the, the last area, we immediately started chasing after endemic life, and that's all we've, literally, that's all we've done there. We haven't even gotten past the first monsters they told us to kill. As soon as we got there, like, okay, Zoo Master, go find those things! We got to the, we got to the end of the game really fast, but then like now we're just really stuck for days. We haven't been able to enjoy the end game at all. It's just like okay, come here, and we're we're trying to find moles. <laughs> yeah, with Monster Hunter games, we usually we we kept our high rank gear for most of it. Um, and really just once we we kind of made little pieces of armor as we went and just went to the we usually do that we'll get to the end game and then just kind of go from there with it but also for the sake of making some videos we, we kind of rushed to the end but i had no idea these last endemic life were going to be such an end game <laughs> it really looks like you've got this monster and fate's like, I bring cake. <laughs> I 
brought you this cake. You want some of this cake. You get the cake and then I give you a hug. Oh no. And then we go on to the afterlife together. Oh, what'd you get for you, Ned? I like useful stuff. Practical gifts are some of the best. Oh, yeah. Makes me sound really old, but... Well, then you think about the person every time you use it. Yeah, they look really nice together, Dave. I actually went and... I've got the Nergi and the Velcana um, flanking the other Monster Hunter figures we've got now because they're cute in front of the other figures and all, but I think they look best as like a left and a right. <laughs> they're like bookends for the Monster Hunter collection. But that real Nergi is coming soon, and he looks really, really nice. Paper clippy thingies? Honestly, paper clips are. That kind of stuff is really useful to us, especially lately with the cosplay. We need anything we can for any kind of organization. So, like, stationery and office stuff is, like, all of a sudden becoming... <laughs> we're, we're, like, probably way more into it than we should be. <laughs> we see that kind of stuff, and it's like, oh, we could use that for this. Hey, it's good to know that uh, paper that clipboards aren't dead. I remember I used to love clipboards. I used to take them all over the place with me, and I got hell for it in school a lot. <laughs> I got have I always got those binders that had clipboards built on the outside of them because I like smart stuff, like things that are built well. Like it, you can really tell whoever designed it was someone who used that kind of stuff and was putting their mind to it. Why did they care if you had a clipboard? Oh, public school, there were so many that were like, oh, you're so nerdy, you're so geeky. It's like, oh, yeah. Oh, students would. Yes. Oh, I thought, like, you got in trouble. Like, why? No, no, I wouldn't get... The, the teachers thought it was great. The kids were just, like, jerks about it. They just jelly. It's like... And you see, this is why in wrestling, they even use clipboards to smash each other's faces. <laughs> I've seen this. Just that—that's a bunch of pent-up middle school energy going right there. Commentators like, "Oh, what's that? He's pulling out! Oh my God! Someone just threw a clipboard into the ring! This is pandemonium!" <laughs> It's almost like when they did that, it was like, this is for all the nerds out there. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the truth, Dave. Next generation, they'll, the wrestlers will be beating each other with iPads. Look at that, he just busted out an art tablet. What's he gonna do with that? I think he's gonna draw a booty whooping for that other guy. Oh, this is <laughs> pandemonium. More Harvest Moon. Oh, I remember the rolling backpacks, audience. They were great. Like, I actually had one, like, day one. I was like, this is the best thing ever. Oh, man. All my backpacks growing up were rolling ones. Until, like, high school and I had to carry all my stuff with me. Like, in, I remember in high school, like, after I got out of military school, I was in public school. And we always had leather-bound, we, we always had leather-bound uh, messenger bags. We didn't use backpacks or anything. We always had leather-bound, like, business-style suitcases or uh, messenger bags. And when I busted mine out, like, I got all the stairs. Like, there was nobody else in the school with one of these things. And, man, I remember I got, I got so much flack for that thing. <laughs> No, Milo, what are you doing? You shouldn't be up there. Oh, 
Something good to come down. Milo's coming down to say hello to everybody. Yeah. Let's get off the keyboard, buddy. He's here now to completely sabotage the stream. I would be so sad if something like that happened, Dave. Ric Flair just whipped out his Wacom Cintiq Pro 32 Creative Pen and Touch Display. All of a sudden, the tablet is broken. You don't even want to know where that pen is right now. No, no, you can't do this to me. You gotta go tuck it into it. Like, a beautiful case. He just and killed The Undertaker with about $1,800 of creativity. No. Yeah, that's important in a backpack, Ned, is all the pockets and the... Because when we were trying to get a backpack, because we were thinking, we're going to be living out of this thing, because we didn't want to have all this baggage. We just wanted one backpack, three weeks. We'll just do laundry. We'll find hotels that let us do laundry. And we did. And we actually survived out of it. It was a Tortuga backpack. Yeah, so those are fantastic. They are... First thing we're going to say, they are pretty pricey. But... Yeah, like Something like that. But the the Tortugas are built to last and they're built to go out there and you can live out of the things. Yeah. They're they're like Bentleys of backpacks. They're definitely a big and a worthwhile investment if you're into hiking or if you plan on taking a long trip anywhere. Let me shut off the cat cams since he abandoned. Uh, yeah. I think I bought it from their website because they have a few different uh, models, I guess. Yeah, I think you can get them. I think you can actually get some of their models on Amazon. The thing is, though, if you go to their website, you can completely customize the backpack. Well, to a degree, you can, like, get things that come in it. Like, choose... Um, oh, the accessory packs and everything? Yeah, like, the... What do you call it? The... They're extra pockets that you stuff stuff in, but it's like a separate piece altogether. Yeah, if you really are big on keeping like your underwear in its own thing or your socks in its own thing, you really want to keep everything categorized. They have a lot of these like mesh uh, little back packlets thing <laughs> that go in there. They're like little packlets. This is what I saw them as when Sasha Sasha got them. I didn't get them. I wanted to just keep it as minimalist as possible, but she had a. Uh, she had a few of these things, and... It kind of... You roll up your clothes, and you put it in it, and then you can, like, cram more clothes into it, and it compacts it, so you can fit more stuff in. Oh, Ned, for LEDs, um, the LEDs, believe it or not, are actually really tiny squares. And they're all, when the chips that they're on are actually like pretty much they're bendable and flexible just like paper. Because all it is is just an electrical circuit of positive and a negative that goes along a little bitty wire that's very flexible straight up to the LED square. If you ever open like an LED, they're really, really small. Or um, like an LED strip, the customizable ones, you can cut them to whatever length you want. Basically, you can just, they're just strips, like paper strips with these little squares on them. And you can see the, the circuit running in between. Just cut it wherever you want, and then you can solder the, uh, the power to wherever you cut. Yeah, LEDs are really flexible, though. Snowboard kids music. What the heck? A little bit of everything in this. <laughs> you can go to their website. I haven't. We haven't been to Tortuga in a couple of years, so they've probably, they've probably upgraded their game quite a bit. Do you remember what the model we got was? Um, like I know what I saw it, but it's probably on the top of my head. It's probably cheap or discontinued by now. And I don't know if backpacks really lose their value or not, but. If you can find one of those cheap, it's a good deal. It's over there if you want to look at the tag. Yeah, Tortuga's like the primo backpack group if you ever are interested in... Yes, baby. 
like I said, we just made an investment because we wanted the absolute best. So when we got there to Japan, we didn't have to worry about our luggage. <laughs> and we couldn't find the sign. Like something that they actually will, uh, they tell you exactly what their backpacks are compared to the sizes you can take as a carry-on. And um, they'll, they, they manage to fit as much as you can like humanly have. within that amount of space, like what you can carry on. Milo's a little, he's getting a little feisty because he's hungry. One second. Yes, Master Milo. I'm getting it. Let's get the food. Yeah. Oh, it actually saved my cat. Yeah, the cats have no... Milo has no extreme manners, especially. Nope. It's like, oh, heard you were streaming. Time to go. Goodbye. I'll go vanish. He went from super nap to super hungry real quick. Oh, really, Dave? How did that go? Group dates are actually one of our, uh... Wait, was it like a speed dating thing? Or was it like... Like, you as a... Like a meetup? Like a mixer? One of those kind of things? I've never been to one of those, but it seemed like they'd be fun. Oh, mixers? Yeah. Um, I mean, they're, they seem like they'd be pretty cool for single folks if you're looking for someone oh, yeah. I actually <clears throat> I tried uh, when I was single I tried a speed dating thing that was a panel at <laughs> an anime convention what that was probably interesting that didn't go anywhere Oh, I got you. So you were a wingman, Dave. You were a wingman. <laughs> hey, it sounds like it worked out for you pretty well, Dave. Did you get any digits? Any numbers? <laughs> there were probably other people around looking at your table like, What's going on over there? There's like four more in the back, let's just pretend. Cause I still gotta draw the little suckers. Oh, Ned Aww. says she likes the tentacles. Well, oh, thank you. I've never drawn tentacles in my life. Well, that's what's important, Dave, as long as you had a good time. Kinda sucks that your friend was, you know, nervous. I, I can understand that, I can relate to that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Anxiety can be a lot to deal with. Yeah, that would be me for sure. I remember <clears throat> when I got to uh when I got out of military school and I went to public school, I felt like I had been homeschooled for years. Cuz whenever I was not in school, I was I was taking lessons from dad at home. And it was always military themed. So when I came out to public school, it was such a culture shock. Like, I, I, I went from, like, so everything was so well-mannered and polite and disciplined and everything. And then now, all of a sudden, all that was thrown out the window. It was like, whoa. What's going on here? Like, always, I was always getting comments on, like, my manners or my discipline and everything, like, they had, they, they responded to me pretty much the same way I was responding to the, the public schools, like, who is this guy, what, what, what are these rules? I 
Public school is, is actually pretty interesting, though. I was only in there for two years. Um, but I met a lot of really interesting people now. There was a whole lot of weird stuff. Like, you run into some some crazy things in public school. But I think it's all good stuff to learn from. <laughs> what kind of face is that? It, it reminds me of a, uh, a Furby. <laughs> It looks like a Furby face. Does anyone remember Furby? Actually, they made a comeback here kind of recently, didn't they? Master Milo, I fed you. What, what is it? Do you want to come sit in the lap or something? Do you want to go sit in front of the... You, you sniffed the pickle jar and made the face. Why did you do this? He took one sniff of the pickle jar and came back up looking like he smelled month-old socks. He's mad you would have the, audac the audacity to eat such a thing. The audacity. The audacity. No, Kitty, eat my pickle. No, Kitty, eat my pickle. Oh, Ned, do you have a Furby? <laughs> Furbies haunt my childhood. Oh, well, if Ned has a Furby, they gotta be pretty recent, so they must be still somewhat relevant. They were frightening when we were kids. Like... Furbies were just creepy. When I had one, I liked it, but in retrospect, they're pretty creepy. I don't know if anyone remembers the beginning of YouTube, but YouTube in the very beginning was plagued with one of the first big things that everyone did on YouTube was like, hey, here's a video of me burning my Furby, running over my Furby, dropping my Furby off of a hundred foot building. Uh, Here's me spiking my Furby into a pit of glass or all sorts of things. Like, people were punting their Furbies into, like, across fields and stuff. It was just, like, Furby abuse was the beginning of YouTube. <laughs> Ned, I think your I think your your folks wanted you to just have some of the to enjoy some of the things they enjoyed or might have enjoyed. I don't know. Furbies were really on it was really either you loved it or you hated it. Kinda like trolls. Trolls made a comeback recently too. Did they? Yeah, they had a movie, remember? Oh yeah. They had a, C, a crappy CG movie. I can't call it crappy actually. I didn't see it. It just didn't look like it was up my alley. I shouldn't judge it. I don't think the ratings were all that good for it, though. Yeah, I didn't hear much on it. So I don't know. Okay. The Vita skins, weren't those, like, pre-order items, Dave, if I remember correctly? They weren't packaged with the main collector's edition, were they? I can't remember... I lose track of these collector's editions. Oh yeah, audience, always. Now that uh, now that the craze is starting to die out for uh, like My Little Pony, audience, I'm thinking the next thing to come is going to be, do you guys remember uh, My Pet Monster? They were the big purple monsters that you could get. They were supposed to be like the, the boy's counterpart to My Little Ponies. There's, they're like hairy monsters. They use purple and orange and red synthetic hair. Had these big green, like, warty, wart-covered nose. And, like, these big jagged teeth and creepy green eyes. <laughs> they actually had the audacity to make a movie about my pet monster. The audacity. An, aud an audastic movie that I rather enjoyed as a kid. Oh, so it sounds like you were able to recoup quite a bit of that cost then, Dave. That's cool. Kind of makes me wonder if if the skins for the Vita are going that well. I wonder 
You remember the, how the uh, the original Xbox had those exchangeable covers you could put on the front? You remember when Eternal Sonata came out? Um, they had the... It was a pre-order item at GameStop. You could get all the characters, the main character cast, each had their own uh, customizable plate, front plate for the Xbox. There's one for Frederick, there's one for Allegretto, there's one for uh, Jazz, the twins had one. Um, Beat. Yeah, Beat had one, and so did... Uh, what was her name? The chick with the bow? Falsetto oh. had one as well. There was a set of like eight. Because I think the villain had one too. And I think Crescendo had one also. Really? Dang, that's a lot. Yeah, I managed to collect them all. I wonder if those are worth anything. Man, what was the chick with the bow? Yeah, n Nickelodeon is really trying to just like relive all of the old stuff because I guess they just I guess their writers are having issues coming up with new stuff. Your doggo's listening to all the things? Is he like responding to things like things he's hearing in your room or to us? Oh, did he hear Milo meowing? I imagine that might irritate a dog <laughs> or confuse him yeah they probably are gauging their fan reactions I mean I've got a lot of friends that actually get really, really mad when they see, like, these reboots that they're coming out with, like the Thundercats reboot, um, I think the Rugrats reboot is one of the newest ones, because it's different from what we grew up with, but in my opinion, I, I don't see any point in getting mad over it, because it is, a, it is, they are trying to tailor it to the new market. I mean, it's definitely, you definitely want to keep at least a level of uh you got to still be a kid on the inside but you also got to remember that you got to make room for the new kids so we can't just hog all those old ips there was a lot of really cool stuff there but there's a lot of stuff in those shows like rocco's modern life i would love for the kids of today to actually get to experience rocco's but it does need some custom tailoring to bring it out of that era because there was a lot of humor in that era there was a lot of stuff that just wouldn't really fit with today's audience. Oh, two more days before we storm Mary 51. Ned, you better get your house ready. We're gonna be coming to pick you up over for the weekend. Everyone's gonna come and visit Ned in Area 51, and then we're all gonna go to Gardner's Village. Uh, yeah, from I'm not 100% certain if they actually are rebooting it, audience, but I, I I did read I glazed over some news articles that were showing like what the reboot was gonna look like, so it might still be in pilot stage, but I it definitely seems like they're trying to scoot forward with it. I'd really like to see some of the older stuff brought back, but there are there are a lot of cartoons from from our day that I don't think would really do too well in to, in, in the audience. No matter how you turned it or redid it, like okay, Cow and Chicken. I don't see how they would be able to bring Cow and Chicken back. Ren and Stimpy, um, Johnny Bravo. <laughs> For the love of God, Johnny Bravo was hilarious, but oh wow, it would be offensive. Man, when I was a kid, I really hated cow and chicken. Didn't you say it was because of all like the the butt jokes or the the no like the butt eyeball, stick? People's eyeballs were falling out like I couldn't. Oh that. yeah, they did I that a lot. Yeah, that's true, audience. I remember seeing that disclaimer. Uh, yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, they do that before the Looney Tunes now. 
What was it? Um, uh, remember that I think I showed it to you when I first saw it. Uh, that disclaimer oh. saying that these these works are uh, are a product of their time. You know, they they do they do display like humor that could be considered quite offensive uh, to today's audiences. The, their opinions and things reflected in this are not the are not Warner Brothers' opinion that sort of thing. Oh yeah, I guess they would need something like that, huh? So people don't come in. Oh, that's like before anything Looney Tunes now. Like, what if they went back and tried to remake the old Roger Rabbit movie? You guys remember the Roger Rabbit movie? One of the best movies of my childhood. Yeah, who framed Roger Rabbit? The one where the villain gets steamrolled at the end. Like, quite graphically steamrolled. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Alright, audience. Go get yourself that old coding book. Fight off the spiders. Oof. I'm not like... I'm not like arachnophobic but man spiders creep me out Ugh. it's all the hair the fur i like i like furry animals but furry insects just don't do it for me but yeah the the who framed roger rabbit with um oh it actually had it actually had a really high paid cast oh you're giving this to me so i'll be back in a second but I'm moving on to coloring. Do you want to play with anything? Okay. Um, let's it see. should already be on the right layer. Let's see what we can find. If it starts eating lines, then just drag the layer down. Okay, gotcha. Eating lines. Okay. Oh, that's like... Let's, oh, we need to go down. Go down here. Bring current over. Zoom in a little bit. There we go. What kind of brushes we got? We need a splattery brush. Look at all these brushes, there's so much. What's this one do? Oh, it's like pixely. Well, that, it, that could work. Yeah, she did. She did do a good job of making her look smug. Ugh, a big orange spider. I don't think orange is a good color at all in nature. <laughs> So let's see. <laughs> Big orange spider. That sounds terrifying. Anytime I see orange, I'm reminded of cow killers here in Texas. And that's like... Oh, yeah. I think they're like the... The third or fourth most painful sting in the world is what they have the... The Let audacity to have a record for. <laughs> sounds awful. I saw those all the time as a kid, but I don't know why. If they were so big, I always assumed that... Look at this brush! <laughs> That's an interesting one. And undo. I always assumed that they didn't bite, though. So I was never concerned about them. It's a really good thing that I never did get bit. This brush does nothing. Translucent? Swoosh. 
Well, that's fun. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, anything, if it's under your bed, it's automatically 100 times worse. Ooh, it reminds me of old screensavers. <laughs> I found a pumpkin on the landing, but she doesn't want to stay. She's scared. Aww. Look at there. Modern art. Casually dies of laughter. How do you... I don't know how you casually do that. I like that one. So you think Demon Slayer has a dub yet? What is this? Huh? There's multiple icons. What do I do? I don't know. Brush says no. I've never used that one before. What's this? It's the... So many do nothing. Oh, you see what that's doing? Nope. Look, if you zoom in real close. Wow. Oh, it's pix cool. it's pixely. Anyway, I'm gonna stop wasting time. Oh no, pumpkin's trapped, I gotta do something. Oh, it airs in a couple weeks? I don't normally watch dubs. But... They're doing it on Toonami, I believe. Yeah, I'm curious what they're gonna do with Inosuke's ah. voice, because I feel like I need this for research. There we go. There's splattery. Save the pumpkin. She trapped. It's not hard. You can just pull it open. Hey, it's okay. I don't know why it's so scary for her to be in here. She sits in the, on the landing. It makes me sad. Is it mountains? It's mountains. Really? You Perfect. can just you can just drag mountains around? Yeah. Easy backgrounds. What is, this is like you see that? It's grass. It's grass. It's blood grass. Look at that. Grass. Blood grass. Well god dang technology comes so far, I'll tell you what. <laughs> well that's terrifying. What about this? I think I may have actually got that Caligula effect overdose. It sounds familiar. I can't see my beta games from here. Why are there cases so small? It sounds familiar though. Stars. I'm wasting time. Here you go. Oh. You can get rid of that spattering down there if you want. I was just messing around with the brushes. I will keep it for now. You'd have to hit undo a lot of times, though, just going to warn you. <laughs> if good. you're going to do it now, do it now, or delete that whole layer. I can just erase it, but I will keep it for now. Ooh, these are going to be black. That's going to be cool. What was your brother terrified, ne terrified of, Ned? If you move the stuff, you can. Just put it right here. It'll get there. We've put it behind the mm -hmm. chairs before. Yeah. Let me try. You just gotta scoot the all your like the paper towels and stuff over. Caligula effect overdose actually looked kind of cool. I watched the um, a bunch of the videos when they were making it, and the story, the narrative sound uh, sounded pretty interesting, but it sounded a little bit ambitious. And that studio generally, when they try to do ambitious, um, it doesn't turn out so well. Stubby's like, "What you doing?" That's Stubby's favorite chair. It's this little chair we have that's made out of rope. You probably see them everywhere at Target and stuff. Now where are you going, Stubby? No! All the cats, like... Oh, it's fine. Mm. 
No, it's not funny, camera. Knock it out. Oh, I need to be checking the Discord. I keep... I've got it up, but I've got it up on a picture. Like a reference. Ooh, that's nice. I'm going with the usual one, though. Oh, those are your pencil clips? Those are pretty cool. It actually looks like a pencil. Does the eraser and the pen work? Oh, that's cool. Oh, that is pretty terrifying. Oh, that's what you're talking about. I think it's a cool design. I like stuff like that. It reminds me of, um... There was this old, uh... Like, video game... Not video game character. A comic book character called Scud when I was younger. Um, I loved his design. He was called Scud the Disposable Assassin. But I loved he had he had this uh, really nice geometric design. He's like an anti-hero. Um, I don't even know if the, I doubt there's anything that exists anymore for him. But I love those kind of designs where it's like something simple but still looks intimidating. I like those. Hey, audio, what's going on? No worries. Glad you could drop in. Oh, you were saying on the Discord that you shared a birthday? You mean like day of the month? Or is it actually your birthday? Yeah, we were curious about that audio. Is today your birthday as well? Or were you like saying you share the same birthday? Like the eight years is on the 18th, but a different month. Milo, if you want to sleep, you should sleep up in front of the TV where everyone can see you. He seems to take offense with being on the camera. You have one job, buddy. He quits that job. I'm a cat. I shouldn't have any job. <laughs> That's fair. Audio that's so like, is today your birthday? I guess. I think that's what that means. Hey, if it is, birthday. yeah. If it is, then definitely happy birthday. You should have let us know a little more ahead of time so we could have planned something. Some kind of crazy double picture. Double or picture. Or something. If it is your birthday, though, are you planning on doing anything? Anything going on? We actually don't really do too much during our birthdays, for the most part. So there's a well-timed Kingdom Hearts symphony. It's not, like, on my birthday, but close to it. She had 12 cats, Dave? What? I mean, we can't really talk. We've got seven, but... That's actually how I feel, Audio. When we when we have our birthdays, we our, our friends... Our friends always want to do stuff for our birthdays, and we always just kind of don't... We don't remind people, because we don't <laughs> like the reminder of how old we are, so we just kind of are like, yeah, we're just going to go, like, I don't know, have dinner, make it an evening watch a movie play some basically we might go out it's like we're just gonna go out and i don't know just eat something i like to go for tea yes sasha actually is a lot more interesting than me she likes to go out for high tea we go to the arboretum nearby and uh we go for high tea it's a it's a pleasant experience it's really nice i don't have anything interesting like that i'm just like yeah uh steak please I just want to go to Saltgrass. That's it. So twelve cats, Dave. Like, man, that's how hard. many cats do you, do you guys average? Like, generally, I know you get a lot of dogs, but it doesn't sounds like it doesn't it doesn't sounds like it doesn't sound like you get too many cats. 
two? So she she upped your she upped the ante on you guys like to the fullest. No oh, dang. Oh, uh, cream pop. So high tea is like is really nice. It's um, like audience just said. It really depends on if the food and the sandwiches are good. So. It's when you all get together and you go to like a nice kind of fancy place. It doesn't have to be that expensive though. The Arboretum is actually like, I think it's like 50 bucks, something like that. So we go there and they it's where they serve you tea in a really nice uh, fancy kind of setting. They bring you three different types of tea usually. Then they bring you courses of food or snacks really that are meant to match the tea. So like the first is usually a like is it like a kind of savory sweet tea yeah usually the first one is i don't know the way the arboretum does it it's usually a sweet tea paired with the sandwiches i don't know why and then like a herbal tea paired with the what is the second course the scones yeah are there two courses of desserts I know there's like three teas, but I can't remember what they go. Yeah, with. you get three teas, and it's it's just kind of supposed to be like I'm no good at this stuff. I'm, I see food and I eat. That's kind of my way, but it's it's like you get to experience. It's like that British tea party kind of thing. Yeah, it's like a fancy tea party for adults or not adults. If you can do that, I don't know. You had to use the ferret cages for cats, man. Oh, they. Dang. Um, well, ferret cages are pretty... They're just a little smaller than, than cat cages, so it's not too bad. I bet some of them were pretty unhappy, though. Yeah, cats don't really like cages too much. Do you see that this video game music list has music from Hat the Full Boyfriend? <laughs> Is that the one where they're pigeons? Yes. No, the... the, the yes, it's... It's like, okay, it's like a dating sim or a waifu game, but... The male is a, is a pigeon, and he's just a crazy pigeon that does all this. He does pigeon things. I thought you date pigeons. I think you might. Because it's Hatofu boyfriend, like so. I think you date pigeons. Pigeon dating game. I remember seeing this. I never played it myself, but I remember <laughs> seeing like the videos for it, the trailers for it. I thought it was some kind of like fan made joke thing, like joke trailer. Did she have a lot of fatter cats, Dave? Or was it mostly thinner ones? You can usually gauge a bit of the, the crazy cat lady's uh, crazy by how fat all of her cats are. If they're all really fat, then she's really into it. She loves the heck out of those cats. Yeah, at least she's feeding them enough. Cause usually it's like that means she's getting... spending a lot of money on those cats. Yeah. Which is really cool, but I mean, it it also can lead to some very unhealthy kitties. Yeah. Only two. Okay. Well, she's probably taking good care out of all, good care of most of them. Those two are probably just lazy. Yeah, we have like seven, and they're kind of all across the spectrum. Yeah, our cats are everywhere, but we also have we have. Like, Porsche's the runt. I don't think you could feed her to fat. I don't think she has that setting. <laughs> like, I, you could probably feed her every day until she could not eat anymore. She could have access. She has access to unlimited food here. And she never grows. She's, she's stuck in year two, kitty. Yeah, she's small. I think she's just got small bones. Later, audio. Take it easy. Hey, Kristen, what's going you. on? Good to see you. <laughs> Line them up and it's like you got the character creator slider. How much floof do you want? We have here, we have little bitty, and then we have absolute unit. Yep, we certainly got that. Aw, oh, sorry to hear that, Kristen. So, how are you doing as far as, like, uh, are you keeping busy? Like, is it just you and your siblings, or what? 
I remember when I, like, when I was still living with the folks, they were pretty much like, anytime they would go out, it was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna have fun. Let's blow the place up, set it <laughs> on fire. No. <laughs> We were pretty respectful. Being a military family, we, we didn't know anything else, really. We were pretty boring. We'd just kind of sit around and actually enjoy the fact we could, like, have time out of our day that wasn't filled with military stuff. Cat burglars? Better stay away from my cats. Our cats have been burgled! Yeah. No, we must find them. Petfinder.com. We found them on the black market. Let's go save them. Turn into what's his face and taken. And <laughs> Liam Neeson? Yeah. I have a particular set of skills. And they are all related to cat care. <laughs> Also, human torture. We have that, too. I'm gonna use those on you. What kind of life would you have to lead if those are your only skills? Cat care and human torture. That's all we know. Yeah, that'd be an interesting one. Oh, yeah, yep, yeah, I know how that feels, Kristen. My dad was always either deployed, and then my mom, uh, when she was a registered nurse, she had quite a few business trips. That, and when she was doing uh, financial aid work, lots of business trips. Military school, we were all in boarding school, so we kind of stayed, we stayed up at the, the military school for most of the year, but during the summer, I was usually alone. <laughs> I was usually raising myself in the summertime. I liked it though because a lot of the time I could just go out and do what I wanted as long as I stayed within allowance standards. Oh yeah, Dave. Now that all the now that all the actual games and expansions are coming out in these months, always around the end of the year, it's like here you go, guys. Got that Persona Five R is on the way. Um, actually, I'm ex that reminds me. Uh, it's not a it's not a game of the year, but I am excited. The you hear uh, Capcom said that they're bringing Mega Man back, and they hope for the series the new Mega Man series to last at least 10 years. The Colonel Sanders dating game is... <laughs> it's interesting. I guess it's original. Uh, I'm guessing it's a counter. It has to be a counter to how successful the McDonald's anime was. The, uh, the McDonald's anime was way more successful than it ever should have been for advertising. Oh, don't worry, Ned. I think that's quite common. I still do that every here and there. Whenever I poke Sash, I tend to make explosion noises. <laughs> here come the finger missiles! And then she just kind of looks at me like, Really, dude? Finger missiles again? You already know my defense is too high for this. That's no good, Cream Pop. And yes, audience, there was a McDonald's... I think it's still actually going. They used anime for McDonald's to advertise it and to... Uh, um, what is it? To advertise and to just kind of bring up their popularity. I didn't. I wasn't aware that McDonald's needed that. I thought they were crazy popular in like every country they're in, which is every country ever, pretty much. 
But yep, there is a McDonald's anime. I haven't seen it, but I've actually heard it's pretty good. Yeah, I don't know if it was like a necessary one, like but usually when any when any industry turns to anime for anything really, it's it's because that industry needs help or that company needs help. Wait, Death Stranding is in a month? Is has is time going by that fast? We weren't able to reserve the Death Stranding Collector's Edition, but luckily Jose was, so he's being kind enough to bring it over, and we can, he's gonna let us, he's gonna, he's gonna be a guest in, a guest unboxer with us, and we're gonna open it up here and do an unboxing for it. Can't wait. We get to unbox that baby, literally. <laughs> yeah, that's super cool. Uh, Kristen, I think in the McDonald's anime, I, I think that actually, I think it focuses on life of the employees. I think if you guys have ever seen that one, um, if you guys have ever seen that anime working, which is one of our, like, old-time favorite ones, it just covers a, it basically is like a slice of life anime that, that follows these, uh, kids working at a, as baristas in a bar, or not a bar, a coffee bar, like a cafe, like a family restaurant, kind of like, yeah, uh, it's like an IHOP, yeah. yeah. So it, it goes over there. The, the employees' lives and their interactions with each other and customers. It's actually a really good one if you guys are looking for a good slice of life. I think it's that kind. It's good to load up on the eBay bucks right now, though, Dave, because we got the holidays coming up. You got them Christmas presents and all that stuff. So Cream Pop, you were saying someone got a hold of, someone's on your account and trying to be mean to Ned? What's that about? I would go change my passwords immediately. Or maybe they're just in the Discord? Better not be our Discord. No, I don't think so. I used to collect keychains when I was a kid. Keychains and shot glasses. Like, I was a kid. I had no business collecting shot glasses. I just liked <laughs> the way they looked. I was really big into how bottles were designed. Bottles and glasses. Ninety-eight days till Christmas. I can't wait for the cold weather. That's what I'm. Mm. I'm after. I wanted to get cold. I'm so sick of the Texas heat. Although I saw something on the news the other day, they were saying that because of all the humidity earlier in the year, that we're gonna have a bit longer to wait until it gets cooler, which is unfortunate. Uh, Dave, I. I don't know. I don't really... I can't say I get too much from Tokyo Otaku Mode. Um, I don't know. Actually, I think I've only bought one thing on there, but it was something that was released already. If you want to pre-order uh, Nergi, though, go on to AmiAmi. Uh, they let you pre-order, and they don't... It'll be like the week before the... Or actually, I think the release date it comes out is when they request payment from you. And then you just pay at that time, and then they, they send it to you. That's one of the reasons I use AmiAmi so much, is because I don't want to have to pay right then, but I want to make sure I can get my pre-order in. Uh, 
Oh, you've got points with Tokyo Taku Mode. Um. Oh, just Google their uh, pre-order process. I'm sure the there's usually like a quick document somewhere on Google that'll tell you how they actually do it. Yeah, Christmas is really nice. I really like the lights. I used to love decorating, but I gotta say I'm I'm getting really lazy nowadays, and we don't decorate nearly as much as we used to. Yeah, and Christmas trees are sort of hard with cats. How much are they charging for it on Tokyo Otaku Mode anyway, Dave? I know they just announced it for the official Capcom say Oh, it is shark okay, so. Do do they have free shipping on Tokyo Otaku Mode? Cause Amiami's a bit cheaper, but you, you do have to also throw in that, that shipping too. Let me see how much Nergi is over there. Nurhigante. Yeah, yeah, he's about one, one thirty on Ami. So once you pay the shipping, if he's the only thing you're getting, then yeah, it, it's a, it's a wash. If you're getting multiple things, then it's definitely a better price. But yeah, other than that, it's definitely a wash. That's a good thing though. I like that I like the fact that you have so many sources for these figures and stuff like this lately. I remember when this stuff was about impossible to get. Like imports were crazy. back when Play Asia was like your only option. I remember Play Asia like knew you could tell they knew they were the only option to import and they were ridiculous. A road trip to Texas, Kristen? That's nice. Where are you guys coming from? Texas has a lot, we have a lot of really good, uh, a lot of really good tourist locales. Uh, Austin and Houston are awesome. Oh yeah, we like to go to Austin sometimes. There's good food out there. Yeah, every now and then we'll go down to Austin. It's about a three, three hour drive, but totally worth it. Austin is, if you like Japanese food or really nerdy stuff, anime, that kind of stuff, Austin is like geeky capital of Texas. Dallas is coming up, though. We're getting a lot of anime conventions. I think we have, like, eight anime conventions in Dallas right now. Yeah, you're, you're right, Dave. We are kind of uh, spoiled now when it comes to the market. Uh, like, pop culture stuff, it used to be so hard to get it and so expensive, but now it's almost like regular market stuff now. And thanks to the brilliance of DHL shipping, you can have it in two days' time, too. Believe it or not, this is Raymond music. Oh, Vegas and Anaheim are fun. Those it sounds like you guys have some nice trips. Disney's really cool. Although when I was when I was younger, I always preferred Universal Studios better. They had better rides in my opinion. But I don't know how they are now. I hear Disney outside of the Star Wars area lately is actually pretty like slim. Like if you go early on in the day, you can almost get like a monopoly on a lot of their areas. They they shoot our packages over Dave like they like in a you remember in Metal Gear those man launchers that they used in the I don't know if you ever played Metal Gear Online but that's how you like launched that's how they launch people in Metal Gear Online <laughs> they threw them on these chairs that like catapulted them up it was like a little railgun but for dudes I could see them launching packages that way ooh sorry to hear about your toothache cream pop. Uh, gargle some salt, warm salt water. That's what I usually do. That and a little bit of, uh, uh, a little bit of whatever your preferred pain med is. Advil, Tylenol, aspirin. I hate toothaches. They're the worst. Oh, the Miz, oh. Oh, jeez. 
Kristen, thank you so much. One of these days, I don't know. It's kind of a it's kind of a running gag now. Our <laughs> whole crazy subscription thing. It always chooses that one now. Like we have like eight animations for when someone subscribes or anything. It always chooses that screen eating epilepsy cat. <laughs> If you ever get a chance to go to, to Universal, though, Kristen, definitely go. I, I loved it when I was a kid. As far as the, uh, oh, the, Mitsun, the Mizutsune female figure, I did see it. That's the one with the palico next to it, right? At the back of it? Like, right behind her is a palico in armor? Yeah, that one looks really nice. She's kind of pricey, though. I... I it's a really nice figure, though. I, I, I've been on the fence about her. Oh, because I said he'll be back. He said he's still here. Crazy subscribing cat is lying. Man, Dave, when we were in Japan, uh, we wanted to go to Universal Studios Japan. We actually had, we actually had reserved one of the rooms at one at the castle, not the Disney castle. Was it the Disney castle? No, because it was Universal Studios. Right, yeah, it wasn't. It, I was thinking, okay, it was like the castle. There's some hotel that's near uh, Universal Studios. We were going to go there, made a big plan out of it, and then we found out that what they were doing, the theme of the park at that time, was, I think, s Minions, like the Minions from uh, Despicable Me and something else that we weren't all that interested in. We loved Despicable like Me, but we didn't really want to go to Universal Japan just is that in for Harry that. Potter, which I like Harry Potter, but I don't think that's your thing. I've just never read Harry Potter. I'm one of the very, very few I know. Um, but tell me why we come back home in November, and then in January, Universal Studios Japan goes and changes their theme to Monster Hunter and Final Fantasy. Like, oh, it was so disappointing. It was like... Mm. Can we, like, delay it going back a month or two? No, the money's just not there. We would lose our jobs and every... Oh, <laughs> that's a shame. I guess we'll go back. So, yeah, we missed Monster Hunter and Final Fantasy is the theme for Universal Studios. Made me cry. Yeah, that was Green eating epilepsy <laughs> cat. No, we don't really do anything like that, Kristen. Uh, every here and there, I try to play around with like little meme stuff, but I'm really bad at it. Everyone else does memes way better, so I, I do like to enjoy their stuff. Oh, I just realized that Milo's drinking all my water out of my cup. Thanks, bud. <laughs> R.I.P. R.I.P. My drink. At least he can't get into my Topo Chico bottle. Ha. Cat proof. Until he knocks it over. Yep. Drinks it off the floor. He would do that. You know Milo. Hey Milo, you don't want to drink any of that pickle stuff. No, no, no. Not today. I got you, Dave. Yeah, I was surrounded by Harry Potter fans growing up, but I never, I just never got into it. I already know everything that happens, because, you know, back when Harry Potter was popular, if you didn't read the books as soon as they came out, everything was spoiled for you. So, I already knew it was like I pretty much, I felt like I'd read them without ever reading them. <laughs> They were so popular. Oh, so you do anime, you do uh, meme stuff, huh, Christian? Sure, go ahead and send a link. 
we're all about sharing each other's work around here, so feel free to post a link to your channel. Although anyone, if they wants to see it, they could also click your profile picture pretty easily too. And yeah, Ned, that's kind of what I feel. I, I don't know, the whole... I like magic and high fantasy kind of stuff, but I think the setting of Harry Potter is what didn't get me. It was like... Because it was written mostly when, like, school in Britain and everything was really popular for whatever reason. It was, like, just an era that people were really enamored with at the time. And I, the setting just wasn't for me. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. This was It didn't appeal to me for whatever reason. <laughs> oh, that crunching is loud. Oh, can you see it in the, like, audio mixer? Oh, I didn't think to look at the audio mixer. Is it that loud? Is it, like, maxing it out? I don't know. I haven't looked at it any crunch. It's still picking it up. <laughs> it is. It's not gonna be your drone shatter. Yeah, I don't use Facebook all that much, Dave. I mostly use it as like a newspaper for our family. I really just keep up with our relatives and close friends via that. It's just kind of so. I check out Facebook to like. I don't know, just so I don't get out of the loop too much with our family, because we have a lot of family up north in Michigan and Illinois so that's pretty much how I keep track of things with them outside of that I'm more if it's social media I'm more like reddit I like reddit um, reddit and discord and Twitter pretty much Is it one of those fitted sheets, Ned? I don't like fitted sheets. Yeah. Fitted sheets are impossible to fold. Yeah, and they're a pain to put on. I like sheets though, just the flat kind. Cause I can actually stick my feet out. Like, when you have like fitted sheets, or when people like to go and <clears throat> fold the blanket under the end of the bed, some people. That, that's like a normal thing. Everybody does that. No. I want my feet. My feet need freedom. They need to be out and I don't want to have to like sleep in the bed at a 45 degree angle so I can <laughs> stick my feet out the side of the bed. <laughs> you fit a folded sheet by burning it. <laughs> Audience knows what's up. Fitted sheets are good for a couple things. If you want to be like a ghost for Halloween, I think they could be used. You could you could probably make like a, you could be a fitted ghost. Imagine you wouldn't have to work. You could move freely with with the elasticity around around the bottom and not worry about losing your sheet. See, Ned gets it. Hashtag free the feet. <laughs> My feet need to fly. That's why they're shaped like wings. They need to fly. Get away. Basically, I have, when I sleep, I look like I'm on a swing. Like a swing on a playground. I just have to lay on my side and just kick my feet out into the room. Because if I have my feet under the under the blankets, it could be super cold out, and I will still get like crazy hot. I'll sweat. You think I've been walking through hot coals all my life? Hey, those tentacles are looking great. Thank you. Puts me in the mood for uh, calamari. Get some takoyaki. Takoyaki calamari. Appetizers. Although I could eat like a whole plate of takoyaki. Any of you guys like takoyaki? If you don't know what they are, they are Japanese food. They are 
octopus balls, like uh, not <laughs> not those kind of balls. I, I should have I should I should clarify. Um, like pancakes with like ginger and yeah, I think like light pancake breading with uh, octopus and ginger and what's the kind of sauce in those things? It's really good sauce. Uh, what is that sauce? Usually covered in bonito flakes. Very good stuff. Kind of think of like fried Japanese meatballs, sort of, but octopus. Alrighty, Kristen. If you're heading out, then thanks for dropping by. Have fun with your animation. Oh my god, it's choo-choo rocket music. All of a sudden, I'm, t I'm teleported back to, or transported. I'm time apported back to 2000. Man, the power of plastic bags is so strong. I'm just watching the audio mixer jump into the red while I'm trying to open this thing. Like, oh no. So, audience, your sister is really picky but loves squid and octopus? Man, usually those are like two of the big ones that people that are picky like will absolutely not try, so. It's a good thing that she's actually willing to try some stuff like that, though. Oh, okay, Christian. Sweet. I didn't know if you were, like, you had to go on the same machine and do your animation. Because if we do anything outside of the stream on the computer, we have to end the stream. <laughs> yep. Milo went over there and sat in the box. He could have sat in front of the TV. I know. Oh, you summoned Portia with your snackery. Yeah, I'm eating these like little cheese crunches. Crunchies? Um, crackers? I don't know. It's just cheese. In a chip shape. Whenever I'm eating the pickle, my cat just opens his mouth. He's like... <laughs> Camera does not compute, so mouth must be wide open. I do love a freshly made bed, Ned. Mm. The only problem is, I hate making a freshly ba made bed, Ned. <laughs> yeah. So I never get to have a freshly made bed. I, I'm one of those, I'm lazy, I just hop out of it, kind of fling the the covers and everything everywhere. My idea of making the bed is getting the bed stuff back onto the bed, <laughs> off the floor. I'll make the bed when there's fresh sheets, but then no more. So I like what you're doing with the blending of the gray to the gray. Are you, is that where the white dress is gonna be at? Like the skirt? Um, the bloody skirt. Yeah, there's gonna be some red in there somewhere. I haven't really find that spot yet. And there's some red involved in the wings and stuff. So you went all gray with it? Is that like priming it? Kind of. I mean, she's great. It looked like you went and applied primer to her. <laughs> she's kind of gray, and I'll do some shading on top of the gray. Yeah, cream pop. Whenever I'm super tired, my bed is always comfy. Probably because I'm super tired, but <laughs> mm. I, I, we actually have this uh, bucket chair is what we call it it's a big round chair that turns like it spins freely and has big like half wall around it and lots of cushions I like to sleep in that thing it's almost like a cat bed but human size now mm -hmm. that I'm looking at it huh that wasn't intentional Oh, you gotta get comfy, Ned. 
every time I get home, I don't care if it's, I don't care what I have to do. First thing I do, shoes off. Gotta be comfy. Oh, you remembered something about fate? What's that, Ned? Oh, what you got? Watch it be something like Ned. Ned's like, yeah, fate can't hold a birthday cake. It's very out of character. <clears throat> and no hands. Just spikes. Fate's wings were based off of Mercy's wings from Overwatch. Oh. She's got nice wings. Oh, Portia wants more cheese. <laughs> Audience says the spikes look like the perfect tool to cut a cake. <laughs> doesn't make it doesn't make fate very good at giving any hugs though no birthday hugs hmm. fate will cut your cake but not give you hugs maybe with the tentacles <laughs> squeeze the life out of you with the tentacle Miss you not cut yep looks like they got a little bit of minecraft mixed into this one yeah. Minecraft music is almost, I, I can't explain it, but the, I can't explain the appeal, but there is an appeal for sure. Yeah, I like it. Like, I've never forgotten the Minecraft music. We haven't played Minecraft in quite a while. When it first came out, we were playing it for a, a long time and got ourselves kind of burnt out. But man, I will never forget the music. Hey Bree, what's going on, girl? How you doing tonight? Well, hello. Yeah, audience, Minecraft music is like it's so simple. But I think that's what makes it beautiful. It's really easy to listen to and it puts you in a really good mode for some reason. Like I always felt like building in Minecraft, and I think the music had a lot to do with it. Yeah, Minecraft is really good for just about anyone, I'd say. Like, it's one of those very few games you can get, and it's good no matter how old the player is, you know, it, it has no, there's really no kind of borders to Minecraft. You, anyone can play it. Skill level, you know, interest in games, anything, I, I think it's a good game for just about anybody. Yeah, anybody can figure out their way they want to play it. Oh, man. Thirty-three hours already? Are they doing... Are you getting ready for, like, a holiday rush or something? Or just been busy just with, uh... That many clients? I'm trying my best not to be loud with these pickles, but it is not happening. I'm in here crunching my cheese chips. So you guys are typically that busy? Dang. 
You're still um <clears throat> at that medical office, right? Oh, you changed the controls, Ned? What do you like it uh do you like about uh like what, do you invert the controls, the camera and everything? That's how I like to think. You work that much over there right now, Bree? I mean, I, I I guess the pay is good, but man, that's that sounds like a pretty rough schedule. Yeah, man. I hope you're gonna be able to get more time off when the holidays roll around so you can enjoy them. Oh, the crouch and the sprint controls. Are you a left-handed? Are you, are you a lefty, Ned, or a righty? Peanuts? Not. How many snacks do you have over there? I have cheese and I have nuts. I mean, you. I have tea. You're like a Girl Scout over here. You just got everything you need. Yeah. You got them cheesy chips. You got them. What is it like? You got everything in there. Are there any honey nuts in there? Any? Mm -mm. No. There's cashews and almonds. Mm. Pecans. Hazelnuts. I like beer nuts. Sugary sweet ones. Oh, there's pistachios. I hope at least they're bringing you lunch every day, Bree. It sounds like one of those where you get lots of free lunches. So you guys are all right-handed? I'm a lefty. Sashir is a righty. Yep. Ned likes the cashews. Oh yeah, cashews is good stuff. Oh, David's a lefty. Aha! Another lefty. Me and Dave share a lot in common, so that doesn't surprise me. Mm. Only when you're writing? Well, yeah, it is. We do kind of live in a right hand, a right-handed people's world. Like we we don't have much choice when it comes to things like manual transmission, mouses. Well, I guess I always could go lefty on the mouse, but lefty mouses are expensive. Screw that. Don't you just put change the side of the computer at some? Yeah, but look, like oh, the buttons. Yeah, the, the buttons and the curvature of the curvature of the mouse is mm. meant for right-handed. It's meant the contours are meant for your thumb to go there and your index finger to go there. And so oppressed we are, the lefties, the southpaws. It's funny, I tried southpaw controls in a couple of shooters once. And I, every here and there I go back and I give them a shot and man, they are weird. <laughs> like I, I, I mess around, I'm like, what are these lefties thinking? This is crazy. Go back goes back to the right handed control. Aim still sucks though. <laughs> Is some of that Pokemon music? Pokemon. I can't remember the last time I actually wrote with my hands. What? Even at, even at work, it was always tablets, like writing narratives and everything. It, we we just use our company issued tablets or phones. When was the last time I wrote something? I still write stuff all the time. I'm very much a baby of technology. <laughs> I use tablet, phone for every like everything. <laughs> Like if someone wants me to write them a report or something, I'll I'll type it up in my uh, my tablet or my phone, and then I'll email it to them <laughs> or text it to them. A mini purse with five pockets—that sounds like something up Sasha's alley. Mm -hmm. Are any of you uh, familiar f with the brand Toki Doki? That's one of Sasha's brands. Yeah, they're my jam. I always get their messenger bags. Mm -hmm. 
I remember when I was playing Pokemon Go, I was after all the evolutions, but I think they were still in Gen 1 the last time I played it, so they were only the Gen 1 evolutions at the moment, or at that time. I remember, though, you could get them by... You just named them after the, uh, the different ones from the different trainers in the old uh, Pokemon. I think Cream Pop is a Tokidoki fan. No? Not humor? I thought you were being humorous. Tokidoki is like stupidly cute. Cute, colorful stuff. It's a bunch of mostly like unicorns. Uh, they they like to mix brands a lot, and they bring food to life. There's like most of the characters are like milk cartons and bowls of ramen and desserts like Danishes and such. Um, I love the little milk characters. Yeah, she likes the milk and coffee characters. You keep thumbtacks in your, your purse, Ned? Isn't that kind of mm -hmm. dangerous? Or do you, like, stick them into the erasers? Oh, Ned knows Toki Doki. Oh, so, oh, you're talking to Cream Pop. So Cream Pop has a Toki Doki plush, but doesn't realize it was Toki Doki. I think a lot of people don't realize that Toki Doki stuff is actually a brand and has a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they have clothes and everything. Mm-hmm. Yep, Sasha's got yeah. a lot of their shirts, jackets, and a few bags. I don't know if they still do clothes, but they used to. They may have switched to mostly figures and bags. They still make bags. Thumbtacks in your bag sounds pretty pokey. I'd be mm -hmm. worried they'd poke me. Are you looking for cats over on Pet Finder, Kristen? Having any luck? Pet Finder can be quite a magical tool for finding new buddies. Yeah, really or good. old buddies. You know, if you happen to have lost a pet, uh, Pet Finder can help you find them again. Oh, Cream Pop, are you token, talking about a Toki Doki? Yeah, they have a lot of pride stuff, actually. They're a very inclusive group. Oh, do they? Mm hmm. Toki Doki's artist and creator loves everybody. It's important for a brand, it's important as a person. They're actually really popular here in America, but also in Japan. Tokidoki is pretty popular too. They used to have a wider variety of clothes, but not so much anymore. Um, a lot of the companies they were collaborating with uh, went out of business. Um, like they had a collab with Ed Hardy a while back. Um, they don't make Ed Hardy stuff anymore, unfortunately, which is really unfortunate because I liked, I really like Ed Hardy's designs. Yeah, oh. oh, Ned, most of the time, I've got really small ears. I have tiny ears. Even the smallest... The company we usually go to when it comes to sound is Bose. Um, Bose or Sony. And we get those ones, those really nice earbuds you can adjust to your ears. They're just squishy, rubbery material. 
and even the smallest on those tend to stretch my ears out. It kills me. But when it comes down to sound, they are a bit more expensive. But if you want really good audio fidelity, then yes. Bose, for sure. Oh, the QC2 are nice. Yeah, those are really good. Um, we actually got... A couple years ago, we got some of the uh, the sport ones, the w completely wireless sport ones. They're fantastic. Have a little charger case you can take them with you, and they're the earbuds that have no, uh, they're all Bluetooth, have no wires between them at all. We've had them for like two years, and they, they still work perfectly. Yeah, they still hold a charge really well, too, and I like run in them, do all kinds of stuff, and they never fall out. They sound really good. And I'm actually deaf in my left ear uh, due to an old injury, but Bose is one of the few brands that actually puts a lot of uh, emphasis on the bass and the, the treble. So I can put in, I can use their headphones and actually the, the vibration, uh, the vibration in my left ear simulates hearing to a degree. So I can actually enjoy the sound much more uh, when it comes to Bose because of that. Yeah, a lot of brands aren't nearly so basic. Right? So you don't get that vibration. I kind of envy you there, audience. Like, there's so many sets of, of earbuds I just can't use. And whenever I use the ones that go over the ear or around your ear, um, they fall down and the whole set ends up resting on my ears and making them hurt. So I have to like really rein in the top of the set so it actually sits on the top of my head. All the YouTube names, oh, that you've gone through? You're... Oh, you mean for like your channel, Ned, or for like, like ones that you've actually personally used? Yeah, sure, Ned. That's almost like that. Talking like YouTube names almost like makes me think of talking like screen names, like on the old internet applications, like AOL screen names, if anyone remembers those, AIM screen names, AOL Instant Messenger, MySpace screen names. Ooh, I can I, I feel you there, audience. When I was a, a kid, I got into a really, really bad fight with a kid once. Uh, we were fighting in an empty lot, and it got really, really bad. It got to the point where we were actually using, like, fence posts, and he ended up with a broken knee and a concussion. I ended up with a really bad concussion, and my left ear drum popped from the impact of a fence post on the side of my head. We pretty much trashed each other, and yeah, I can't hear to this day, and I remember it was a good couple years before I could actually properly wear anything on the left side of my face at all. <laughs> Had quite a few uh, breaks to, to fix. <laughs> Ah, uh, the good old days where you just, you made your friends by completely pummeling one another. <laughs> And back then, our parents were like, pretty much, it was like in Godzilla, all the parents saw us starting to fight, and it was like, let them fight. So are you going to lighten up the color on that, or is it is gray her color? I don't remember at all. I think it's gray, but I'll probably get some highlights. 
highlight to oh you're right it is kind of darker gray gray and i think gray is a good color for anything that's kind of referring to like the future or fate or anything like that because gray is like that uncertain color Water polo is always fun. I think I took a shot to the eye actually pretty hard in water polo once. I've never played water polo. Luckily I can still see. Hmm. I always did a lot of stupid stuff as a kid. I don't know how I'm still around. One of my favorites was holy ouch anime. <laughs> Boo Bear sounds like one of those. Oh, I like Phoenix Productions. No, before we made the channel, I don't think we ever made. Did you ever make a YouTube name? Oh. I just watched as guest forever. I think I had an account, but it was just my name. Cause we started off like as the website, you know, back when YouTube wasn't. Smartphones weren't really a thing when YouTube first came around. Not, not like they are now. They're more like that was era of BlackBerry, right? I think so. So it was mostly websites mostly the website and I, I never made a name I don't think I ever made a YouTube name before we started the channel because I remember it was all new to me when we did I was like how do I do this <laughs> account settings why what am I doing here whoa they have music from threads of fate on this collection that's going back Oh, their feet are huge. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, Threads of Fate, their their hands and their feet were really huge in Threads of Fate. It was a great game. It was a sleeper hit. Mm. It was a beautiful action game. Like, man, love that game. And their art style is cute. Yeah, the art style was really unique. That's a, they're, They looked really closely to that because they used similar... Uh, the graphics in that were on... It was on PlayStation 1, but it was similar to a uh, cell shading that they used. Hmm. I love the cell shaded graphics. Oh, one second. It blocked that chat for whatever reason. Where'd it go? Where's my chat? Animated Blade Works is a cool one. Oh, yeah. Unlimited Blade Works is still my favorite fate, I think, to this day. Have you been keeping up with the most recent fates, uh, Dave? Because, I don't know, it... It seems like they're really kind of dropping the ball on production value for the fate series. Like, Unlimited Blade Works and uh, Fate Stay Night, like, they were so good when, uh, when Ufotable was the studio that was working with it. But the more recent ones, I'm finding it harder and harder to get into Fate. They went in a weird, like, writer mystery direction. Don't actually. I mean, I think even Ufotable could still work with the, the, murder, de the murder detector whodunit sort of theme. But the thing is, like... I don't know, I think because the, the Fate series is getting so popular, and has been so popular, I think they're they're losing sight of the original work. And it's, it's kind of getting mass-produced. Yeah, it seems like if it's not ufotable, it's really not worth watching. Oh, Ned was saying that looks super cool. The, I think, the blood... Welcome back, Cream Pop. 
You all right there, Kristen? Getting a little bit of that uh, that mouse ache. What is it, the carpal tunnel? I'll have to see if I can do it again because I did delete a few things. Yeah, that's kind of what it seems like, Dave. Uh... Yeah, the original, original, I, I know Fate originally came from uh, more adult, less, <laughs> less wholesome or origins, but like, I don't know. I wish they would just keep Ufotable busy nonstop, but Ufotable is doing great things with Demon Slayer. Oh yeah, yeah, just gorgeous. Phalanges, metacarpals, and carpals. My carpals are in tunnels, and my met my metacarpals are on. They're carpooling. They're carpooling. So all that's why they're. Wait, maybe that's why they're metacarpals. Because they're they're just carpooling together. So there's a lot of them. Meta. <laughs> metacarpals. That's like Uber. Play your hands, but they drive your hands into a fire. The meta carpool. Using our beautiful hands to bring beautiful people together to make beautiful things. Tis the new meta. Some body parts are named some really fun stuff. Like, I like, uh, what, what's my favorite one? Abductors? The ones that uh, you use on your hips? Yes, abductors. Yes. It's just funny. It's like, these are your abductors. And you Maybe. use them to run away if you're abducting someone. They abduct your legs. Abduct. Oh man, this is old school Sonic. Brings a tear of nostalgia to my eye. I think Milo's in that box over there. I think he is. There's He's a... enjoying himself. He's enjoying himself. We have a delivery box that the Borderlands collection came in, and uh, it's sitting in the bucket that I told you about, guys about earlier. And he, so he's sitting in a box that's sitting on top of the comfiest chair in the room. Just seemed kind of funny. Every here and there, I just want to sit and take a few seconds to enjoy one of these songs. So, I, I got, I'm curious, what, were you aiming to put the cake? Make it seem like fate is holding the cake? Nah, I just or ended up that way. The, the cake is a lie, it's a mm -hmm. byproduct. It's a lie product. Yep. Cake is a lie product. Can change your cake. Oh dang! That's. I just looked away, and all of a sudden, this it, you're actually getting close to getting done. Sorry. You just get shading. Yeah. A giant crayon. I think I've seen those in the arts and craft stores over here and there. Is so it one of those that's like as big as like the bottom of a baseball bat? Like you actually have to hold it 
like in your whole hand. I have no idea what this music is from. Are your phalanges okay, Ned? Have you been typing a lot? Are your phalanges hurting? Are they sore? Are they tired of you and your crap? Then come on down and get some Deus Ex hands today. <laughs> Sounds like some Age of, Age, of, Age of Empires type music. But the picture there is definitely not. Yeah, I have no idea because they for this 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 audio they used fan art. And I don't recognize this dude in his wolf. What color is your giant crayon, Kristen? Just out of curiosity. My guess would be... Purple. You want to guess the crayon's color before mm, Kristen green. answers? Green? Purple green. We're going with Joker's colors. <laughs> oh, it's blue. I'm both wrong. How did this happen? You should have said your favorite. Blue's your favorite color. Man, I was going to. Should have gone with the favorite. You went with my favorite. You went yeah. green. Oh, the rapper's purple. I'm partly right. <laughs> I have no idea what that sound was. <laughs> Success. That's your victory sound. <laughs> Everyone's got a victory cry here, right? Yep. Mine's <laughs> followed by more hwas. So it's a <laughs> It sounds like if a seal were to laugh. <laughs> like a, a sea seal. Leg. What's your victory cry? Uh, man, I don't know. Wahey? Yeah, probably something like Wahey. Wahey! Weird demonic screaming. <laughs> so basically the sounds Fate here might make? Scree! I got my cake! Scree! Wallababoshi! Wallababoshi, I like that one. Don't make me go Wallababoshi on you! Like, what do you feel, Ned, when you get, like, what do you do when you get so excited that you just can't contain it? I actually had a friend once that whenever they got so excited it was very unfortunate, but they would really usually get ill. Like it would cause them to be really like na nauseous. It was pretty unfortunate. Like anytime he got sick, he had to go to the bathroom. I was like, oh, that poor guy. I really hope he grew out of that. I haven't, I haven't seen him in years, but I hope that he got past that. Because that would be, that would kind of suck. Yeah. Do you scream until people sh tell you to shut the duck up? That's the that's the the that is like the biggest phone autocorrect. You don't mean that word, right? You mean duck, duck. Oh, yeah, you mean duck. Oh, I like the shading you did on the face. It has this real Paolumu look to it. Oh yeah. Paolumu is really a god. Actually, I mean outside of the tentacles, if if it would if the bottom was a really big tail. It almost looked like a subspecies of Paolumu. 
Holy crap, it's Legend of Mana. Legend of Mana. Man, I remember this theme. Alrighty, Dave. We'll catch you next week, bro. Thanks for dropping in. Go have fun with Iceborne. Beat beat that vulgar Anjaneth up. Vulgar Anjaneth. Scream at him a little bit to let him know that you were there. Use your victory cry. Yeah, use your victory cry. Wallababoshi! Woo! <laughs> yeah, we do. As soon as we get these videos done and we're... We're just going to get all you guys in the squad so we can play together. We just hate to try and party up with you guys, and then it's like, uh, sorry guys, we, we got to work. <laughs> but we should be done with them here pretty soon, as soon as these freaking endemic life show up. That's a whole lot of ducks, Ned. Have you guys seen, there's a video, I think it's in Japan where they have like 60,000 ducks uh, across the street and they actually have like all these security guards and police come out and block uh, they they manage traffic while there's like 60,000 ducks uh, going across the street during a migration it's great because it's it's just like a regular old street like street crossing like with lights and everything so they just hold they hold the policemen hold the, the cars at bay and it's just like a sea of ducks for like two minutes. Sounds like a fantastic happening. They have another migration on one of their islands. There's an island that's famous in Japan for it. Uh, I think it's once every four or five years. They have all of these crabs hatch. I think that's Australia. Is it? I think so. Maybe you're right, yeah. There's somewhere, it's like every five years, there's a huge, like, masses of clutches of crabs hatch. And they, they're, it's on an island, and they basically migrate from one end of the island to the other, to the beach. And it's just like, there's so many of them, for like, four or five days, there's so many crabs around that, like, everything is red. Because there's all these little baby red crabs everywhere. I forgot these are black crabs. Super Crab Festival, and I think they're I think they're like a, it's considered a sacred movement, so it's against the law to bother the crabs or anything, unless they're in danger while they're migrating. I think if you see them in trouble, you can help them out. But I don't think I think they're I think they the law actually watches for people. And make sure that they treat them like an endangered species when it happens. What games do we play? We play a little bit of everything except for like sports games. But what we are playing right now is mostly Monster Hunter Iceborne. We do have Borderlands 3 waiting. Unfortunately it's waiting because we're trying to make videos for Monster Hunter Iceborne. Uh, we play a lot of Final Fantasy XIV when the mood hits. Um... I just got Astral Chain, and I really want to give it a lot more playtime. It deserves more, I just haven't been able to because of time. But mostly like RPGs, uh, action games, uh, high fantasy kind of stuff. We're looking forward to Code Vein coming up. That one looks really good. Cream Pop says the fate looks so cute. I don't normally draw scary things, so probably fate is not meant to be really cute. Oh, I'm sorry. Autocorrect can do some funny stuff. Oh. Uh, we haven't ever. I can't say we've ever tried Roblox, Kristen, but we have tried. We used to play the crud. Out Minecraft. We played it for a long time and we played a lot of it. Like when Minecraft first came out, I think we spent almost an entire summer building. We played it so much that we got burnt out on it. 
If only we'd been into streaming and we had a YouTube back then, we'd probably still be playing Minecraft as a career to this day. <laughs> now that I think about it. <laughs> Minecraft is honestly very amazing for the fact that it, it's got some of the most playability and has stayed popular, like, like steady popular for 10 years. Yeah, that is a feat. When you consider how fast people consume media and technology, and games especially, like Borderlands, it's really popular for right now, because it just came out. Give it about, what's the next big game? When Death Stranding comes out, everyone will have forgotten about it. People just kind of go between games, like, so fast. But Minecraft is, like, immune to that, like... It's perfectly immune to the, the regular everyday formula that every other game has to cater to and adhere to. We should make a stream on Minecraft. We've cons we, we try to play games every here and there. The only thing is, uh, as we've told our other viewers here, we live in Texas, and the heat here is really ridiculous, and our air conditioners are not that good. We do have them, but they tend to be really loud, so whenever yeah, we... Turn them off for the stream. Yeah, exactly. Whenever we have a stream, we have to mostly turn off our air conditioning and kind of pray that our equipment and ourselves don't get too hot. Like, right now, it's not too bad. Uh, yeah, it, it actually just rained, so it cooled up a little bit. Yeah, we just got some rain, so that's good. So we're actually in pretty good shape for right now. But whenever we start playing, we have to have both of our PlayStation 4s on, our TVs, um, the computer. See, right now we just have the computer, one TV, and one PS4 on. That's it. So it doesn't get too bad, but we have everything going. It gets kind of spicy in here. <laughs> We'll probably do a bit of streaming, though, once the weather cools off. Because we do like to do it. We just also uh, don't like overheating <laughs> us or the equipment. Fortnite was actually really good when it first came out. I remember before the Battle Royale. I, I don't really play uh, the Battle Royale, but when Fortnite was first announced like back in 2014 I was really hyped for it I was excited for it I followed it for years and then when it finally came out we were playing it uh, from day one we're founders and we were playing it it was really cool for like a month because I like I like horde games I like tower defense games you know where they just cut you build stuff and they hit you with wave after wave of enemy so the save the world mode was really up my alley I've got nothing against the Battle Royale mode, though. It's keeping them successful, and they keep updating it. So, I mean, it, it's got its fan base, and I think they've earned it. It's not really up my alley as far as, like, playing, though. It's not my kind of thing. Nothing wrong with it. I just don't really find it, you know, not for me. But I, I think as I think from a developer standpoint, the fort the the people at Epic really do a good job as far as keeping it updated. They market Fortnite really well. They're brilliant about the way they market it. And the collabs they're doing are really impressive. Like they do all the smart collaborations. Like they know how to make money with it. And I cannot say that I can hate on a hustle like that. Oh, Ned said she loves fate so far. Thank you. I'm glad she's going out okay for you. She really looks like she should be like, uh, the design's really interesting. I'd say you could do like a, I would think something, like she really makes me think of like a Digimon. I oh, would say yeah. a Pokemon, and some, some Pokemon have like more mature designs. But this, I would say Fate's got a more mature design than what Pokemon's known for, so that's why I say Digimon. Yeah, I get more Digimon vibes. Yeah.
Oh yeah, I think everyone knows some Fortnite fans out there, Kristen. <laughs> it took the world by storm. I gotta admit, it was the the launch of Fortnite was almost like the launch of Minecraft all over again. Now, whether or not Fortnite has the power, the staying power, to remain popular a decade from now is a big question. But I wouldn't be surprised if Minecraft was still popular, you know, ten years from now. It would not surprise me one bit. The evolutions, yeah, I like the evolutions. Evolutions, it's I, that's a word that doesn't roll off my tongue very well. I thought the Eevees were so cool in the beginning because out of all of Gen One, they were like the only ones that uh, it was the only Pokemon that could turn into multiple things, so it was really unique. Ooh, your funny bone is never funny, hitting it. They should rename it to the. They should rename it the Funky Bone because it makes your nervous system do all sorts of funky stuff when you hit it. Like if you hit it really hard, about a hundred percent of the time you're gonna go do a dance around the house while you wait for the pain to stop. At least I do. I hit my Funky Bone and I'm I'm off doing some real funky stuff to get my mind off of it. Hitting your humorous isn't too humorous. No, it is not. <laughs> so, Ned, it seems like you really like biology and anatomy. I hit my funny bone and I just go into stupid mode. It's like brain off. Body mode. Active. All activities. Hyper mode. That's actually a really good, uh, both of you have really good interest there right now. Very, very valid interest as far as the market's going. Anatomy is always going to be big because, well, we have bodies. So we always need to know more and more about how it's going. And unfortunately, you know, lots of people do silly things. And, you know, new sicknesses come around, new injuries. So anatomy is always important. Astronomy is really important because, I mean, we're actually, we're in a time where we're about to start, we, we are looking toward moving to other planets in the near future, like, with, especially with, like, Elon Musk, Elon Musk, not Ellen, uh, Elon Musk going out there and trying to get us to Mars as fast as possible, um, apparently they found signs of other planets that have water and good temperature for life, so there's... A lot of really exciting stuff happening and the more busy it gets here on earth the more we're gonna have to look to the stars eventually so astronomy is gonna be more and more important than ever oh that makes a lot of sense Ned since you like to draw yeah anatomy would be a really important thing for you oh yeah I saw that Ned. They're trying to make a vacation hotel, uh, a vac vacation hotel in space, like that orbital one. It's supposed to be up on a, some kind of a space station or whatever. That's really cool. I mean, it's a really cool concept, but can you imagine? Like, do I have the disposable three hundred thousand dollars a night to go stay up in the orbital hotel? Yeah, for sure, no. Can you imagine though, just sitting in like a pool or a hot tub, something like, or a, or a, maybe a. Uh, like a synthetic beach, just hanging out and looking out into space, from space. I've always thought that was a really cool concept. Like those, you know, in like Wally or any other fantasy sci-fi thing where they, they have to pretty much replicate everything on a spaceship. Like you're going to have your farms, your beaches, all that. Imagine just sitting on a beach on a giant ship out in space just looking into the stars. Hot 
possibly out by 2025. That's crazy. We can't even get a we can't even get a good bullet train here in Texas yet, and they've already they're about to open up these space hotels. Dallas needs to step it up. Not Dallas, Texas. rains diamonds on Jupiter. Can you imagine going out in that kind of rain, though? It's so pretty! And then all of a sudden, Instant well, death. dead. Mm. Well. Better take that strong umbrella. Raining glass, that makes me think of uh, Gears of War. <laughs> there were levels where it actually rained glass. So you had to move from area to area very fast. When you think about it though, planet Earth, we really we really had it have it good here. Very lucky for us, although if you come from another planet, any creatures from another planet would probably uh, die instantly here. Like, hmm, this oxygen stuff? Yep, can't do it. Blech. Ogre Battle 64? Person of lordly caliber. took us millions of years, but we did adapt. It's too bad we didn't adapt to have wings and gills, though. Yeah, that would be cool. Then we could be one of those land, sea, air kind of critters. Like, I want to fly, so I'm a fly. I want to swim. I can swim, but not too long. I'll drown. I want to swim deep under the water. But we can only go so deep before we get crushed. Can do the boring land all day. A gotcha life story where a girl breathed carbon dioxide? I would, you know. I wouldn't be surprised if humans started exhibiting those kind of adaptations because we kind of build our we've kind of built our environment over the past couple hundred years around that sort of thing so do you want to save it before and after kitty oh should i yeah just so you got it separate both ways always can you type something Yes. Uh. I just realized the face of fate reminds me of an axolotl. Hmm. Yeah, she looks like an axolotl in the face. Oh, yeah. With the frill and all? Yeah, the frill and the, the cheeks and everything. She looks like an axolotl. Yeah, it's pretty crazy how much something that we wouldn't consider too heavily, like distance from the sun or distance from the moon, distance from other planets, would affect like the whole system, everything we live on. Like even just the, the, the axis that our planet sits on, if it shifted like just a couple of inches, like it could cause all kinds of catastrophe. And not the good kind of catastrophe. Oh, so you did have a little bit of inspiration from Axolotl, huh? They're really cool animals. I'm, 
I'm really, really concerned about their welfare, though, because I think they're down to, like, the last hundred in the world. Maybe, maybe in, or maybe I'm thinking in captivity? I know they're really, really highly endangered. Hmm. That makes me sad. I like crafts a lot. They're so cute. Alrighty, Kristen. It was a pleasure meeting you. Hope we see you next time. We usually do these once a week, Wednesday nights at 7.30 p.m. Central. Have a great one. Thanks for dropping in. Hope to see you again. Yeah, I saw something on that the other day, uh, Ned, that uh, there was a, they think that the Ice Age was based on that. And then there was something like the meteor. It was supposed to be when the meteor that wiped out the dinosaurs hit that it actually caused the shift and then it just tossed everything into an ice age. If you think about it, it's kind of like it's kind of like if you're working like you're like if you leave you know when you leave your computer on for too long and it starts to lag and show a lot of slowdown and everything. If you think about like all the data processed in your computer, like everything, you're, all the processes it's doing, games you might be running, internet windows, tabs, email, all that kind of stuff, all that, if all the data were like compressed information of like, say the information was turned into time and life, you know, like inside your computer all this life was going on. And then, oh, it's gotten a little, it's been on for a little too long, you gotta reset it. So you reset it, and that's the ice age for everything in the computer. Oh, you didn't think I was going that way? <laughs> no. Take it easy, cream pop. Have a good one. We'll see you later. Night and night. I don't think we got much longer here anyway, so you won't be missing too much. Nothing better to have on your birthday than axolotl, axolotl octoids and cats and birthday cakes. Yes. I would be surprised if mercury was shrinking with how cold it is. Just thinking about, just thinking about uh, how cold mercury is makes me shrink a little bit. Kairoon from Twitch. Man, so that's what causes the lag? That's actually really cool and interesting. So the lag coming from your computer's too long is magnetization error in the hard drive. Due to the heat of the, it demagnetizes, that makes it harder to process it. That makes a lot of sense, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I had no idea. It's kind of awesome. I mean, it's not, it's not good, but... Hey, thanks for the random facts. That's really cool, actually. I love when people who are watching the stream have a lot of knowledge in something and they can just kind of throw it in there. Yeah, it's always fun to learn something. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I don't recognize the your name. Uh, it is Kyroon, right? For the my text is so small on this computer. No, Kane Rune. Okay, there we go. I'm sorry, I should have. If I sounded loud there, I got right up next to the, <laughs> right up next to the monitor. Well, welcome to the stream, Kane. Thanks for the facts and yeah, I didn't recognize your name, so welcome to the stream. We're almost wrapping up here, but I mean, it's good to see you. And I mean, always if you, if you feel like dropping in, we're always around once a week. And we don't get too many people on the Twitch side of things. Yeah, I actually think that Twitch is, it's by far the superior service, because, mm -hmm. like, what we're discussing with you is almost one-on-one -on -one as far as the latency, is, like, maybe one second between your messages and ours. With, um, YouTube, it's, like, I think 22 seconds. Yeah, it's huge. Let's see. 
Yeah, we tend to just draw a bunch of stuff usually. Usually game related stuff. This week is one of our viewers birthday, Ned over there. It's her birthday, so this is one of her original characters. Yeah. I'm really getting like a a strong Digimon vibe though. <laughs> like like Digivolved, but not Mega Digi. You haven't gotten to the point where she started putting on cybernetics yet. Maybe next time. Yeah, YouTube is a cool platform, but it is a slow one. But if you consider the fact that Twitch, they started off doing that, it makes sense that they would be better at it. But Oh, look at them, throwing in the Kingdom Hearts music. Yeah, Ned, I'm 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 the same as far as like facts. I like fun facts, but as far as like are you just is this everything? Are you pulling it out of your memory, Ned, or are you like looking this up? Are you googling fun space facts? Although I guess you wouldn't run out if that were the case. So the cat, I noticed the cat has his beans up in the air like he's <laughs> Like he's like ex he looks it like he's expecting something. Is mm. he like, give me the presents, give me the cake, mm. where the cake? Give me the icing. How can I make this smell? Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, Ned. When we were trying to think of a thumbnail to use for this, because you know usually we do a picture of whatever we're drawing ahead of time, we had no idea what to do, so we just kind of went with the whole like our conversation earlier with you sending us the video of the, the cat licking the cake. The fact you remember any of that, Ned, is good on you. I can't remember, like, much of anything. I used to have a pretty good memory, but I think as soon as I figured out that I could Google anything, I, my brain just started info dumping everything. It was like, yeah, we're going to overheat and demagnetize at this rate, so <laughs> we're just going to go ahead and Google everything from now on. Don't need any of this. I still have a bunch of old video game trivia stuck in my head, though. I don't think I'll ever forget that. I'll probably be on my deathbed someday, 300 years from now, like, man, I still remember where the first high potion was in Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> Space smells like seared steak? If that's what frozen people smell like, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of have to agree with you there, Kane. Can't, can't take the Kingdom Hearts song seriously after hearing Donald Duck sing. <laughs> oh no, I have not heard that. I, f I have a feeling I don't want to. Donald Duck singing anything could make it could take immediately and forever strip all seriousness from anything. Yeah. The unicorn is a national animal of Scotland? <laughs> what? What kind of rules are they going by? Oh, that's wonderful. You can't you can't hurt our, our national animal. It's illegal. No, you really it's can't. It's also impossible. <laughs> When you're tired of people abusing your your uh, your international your national animal, you just make it an imaginary one. We're tired of people hunting our national animals into extinction, so we're just gonna make it something that is just doesn't exist. That works. 
Snails have 14,000 teeth? Is that a standard? Yeah, Kane's got a point there. Space probably smells of ice and iron. <laughs> ice from your own body's humidity and iron from any pop blood vessels. The last thing you smell before you before you become a human sickle is you freezing. Space is pretty terrifying. I, I don't like the whole lack of oxygen, but it's so fascinating. It's like that I think that's why it's so romanticized because it's it's the ultimate beautiful but danger thing it's mm -hmm. it's it's that danger girlfriend aspect <laughs> it's like i wish to go out and explore everything but everything will kill me fantastic i'm <laughs> gonna confiscate some of those teeth mr snail you don't need these right we're gonna go give these to more needy creatures, you know, like, uh... Turtles. <laughs> turtles just have one giant tooth, that's all they need. I want a beak. No, I don't. He's <laughs> gonna immediately change your mind. Can you imagine a beak would be like... It would be so... In the way of everything, like, if we had beaks. I mean, I guess we'd be used to it, because you're born with it, but... Humans with beaks. I guess if you were to put like a wig on a parrot, it would probably be pretty similar. Or a bird. I go just go and toss a just toss a wig on one of them. They have prettier eyes than most humans though. Oh, we got some poems coming in. Hit us, Ned. I keep expecting you to, like, shoot the picture over so we could see all of her left wing, but then I keep reeling it. That's... That's the border of the picture, isn't it? Yep, I don't exist. Okay. Just gotta... I just gotta get that out of my head, that she's, like, creeping out of the picture over there. Goodbye, I got somewhere to be. Oh, it's Klonoa music. I loved Klonoa. I don't really get too much into the collectathon games like Crash Bandicoot and Spyro and all those, but Colette, Klonoa oh, man, is I one didn't. that got me. That was my jam when I was a kid. And Klonoa was a friend of Pac-Man. What? He's one of Pac-Man's best friends, Klonoa. I didn't know. Look at his hat. And Klonoa was one of the few critters out there in a collectathon that had the audacity to go and say, Hey, Sonic, I'm taking one of your things, your rings, your golden rings, and I'm going to throw a jewel on it. It's going to be a wedding ring, and that's what I use. That's beautiful. Klonoa had some great music, though. Can I take your golden ring and I have one of you... Plus jewels. So it's looking like we're pretty close to finish here. Well, yeah, are there I... any details you want to get to? Hmm. I think we're about done. Uh, I need to sign it somewhere. Hmm. You got tons of blades there to work with. Yeah, that's not blade. <laughs> it's too long for YouTube, Ned. If you want, you can always go throw it in the, uh, maybe the art channel on the Discord. Oh, yeah. Poetry's art, right? 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 Yep, yep, yeah. Yep. I'm more of a writer, I would say. At heart. I say that. I don't write. I haven't written in a long time. But I like the idea. It's a nice idea. It's never too late to get back into it. 
never too late for love. Well, Ned, you have designed one heck of an interesting creature here. We have an axolotl octoid with bladed mercy wings. So cute. And snake face. Snake face. So are these like drills at the ends of the wings and on the head? The drills that will pierce the heavens? Um, and the ocean and everything else? They sort of look that way here. Well, she said she sent the phone in the Discord. Alrighty, Ned, we will take a peek at it later on. If it's that long, I don't want to sit here and just be silent reading it. <laughs> <laughs> because as long as you don't know that I haven't done anything wrong, then why not drills to pierce the heavens? I mean, if you need protection, there's no better protection than a good old drill, I guess. Yes. I like the way they look. Otherwise, it's like, you know when you have trouble, like, there's different folks have different problems with anatomy, like, most people don't like to draw hands, or feet, in my case. So, like, what if it could be just like, I don't, I don't like to draw hands. I draw drills instead. <laughs> Everyone has drills. Perfect solution. Wow, thank you, Ned. Thank you. I did try my bestest. Yeah, glad you like it, Ned. Happy birthday to you. Oh yeah, happy birthday. I think since we're done now, uh, Ned, we'll go ahead and we'll post it in um, Discord, so you can download it if you want. Um, yeah, I'll post the um, before cat, and I did add some details. I think after the cat, though, I'll post both. Yeah, she got both before and after the cat, so if if the cat makes it so it's not quite as serious as you'd like, then you can go either way. Dubs for hands, like little circles. Oh, yeah. I like to do that, too. I'll do like a, I'll, I'll do a circle and then like add in some, I'll like cut out and make some, put some like little half squares and stuff. And like, those are knuckles. <laughs> so I'm like... Vaguely hand shaped fists done. Or like Success. the IKEA directions. IKEA directions, <laughs> dude, you know the dude in that? He mm -hmm. he just like straight up has nubs. They like yeah. they look it looks like he, he walked off the sign for, you know, the men's or women's restroom hmm. icon. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, like the Powerpuff girls, yep. Those power those the Powerpuff Girls had a lot of power in them nubs. Like, did you ever see the horrors that they wreaked upon poor Mojo Jojo? Mm. They always broke his brain case and everything and Ouch. gave him a black eye. Like, Mojo never walked away in good shape. Like, they beat the dirt out of him. <laughs> the dirt? I don't know how he survived. Well, alrighty, guys. It looks like we are done with this one for tonight. Again, Ned, yes. happy birthday to you, girly. And hope you have a great weekend. Hope you have a lot of fun out there at the uh, the Gardener's Village, I believe it was called. Yes, the Gardener's Village. We'll go with that. Yeah, and that was it. outside of that, Kane, thank you for dropping in tonight. We appreciate you hanging out, chatting with us, throwing some knowledge our way. Yes, we always appreciate I hope to see. Thanks. Yep. Hope to see you at some streams in the future we do it every week wednesday night 7 30 p.m central standard time if you care to see some stuff getting drawn and some cats doing some rambling that's us you guys have a great evening we love you we will see you next week um as far as anyone who might be watching this after the fact or if you're new we love you guys too uh, likes and subs are appreciated but you don't have to worry about all that what we do ask for around here though is that you consider if it's within your means, adopting or rescuing an animal. ASPCA.org, PetFinder.com. You can also Google local animal rescue and adoption options near you. If you can't bring one home due to allergies, living conditions, what have you, uh, there's other ways you can show your love. What are some of those? 
You can also go volunteer and still spend time with the guys, or you can donate money, or blankets, clothes, they can use all that kind of stuff. Yep, so if you've got love to give, there's plenty of ways to give it, plenty of ways to show it. And unfortunately, there are plenty of animals out there who could use it. And speaking of love, again, we love you guys. Remember, buy your fun, not your fam. Adopt, don't shop. We'll see you next time. Good night. Later night. Happy birthday, Ned. Happy birthday.